All right, guys, welcome to the 7.24 gameplay patch. First impressions. I was totally planning to do this today while watching the tournament, and uh, here's the patch. So let's go through it. It's uh, it's moderately long, moderately long. All right, here we go. I haven't read this before. I've only been spoiled on one thing before this, and hopefully, it looks like my position is okay. Oh, I just got spoiled on another thing. All right, heroes now have a dedicated neutral item slot. Ooh, this was uh, I've he I heard this recommendation from Sind. He's like, it would be nice if they had a, a neutral item slot. That way you weren't limited by slot stuff. A maximum of one neutral item can be equipped on your hero. And one thing that I think this is really needed for is in ultra late game scenarios with pro teams. It's very frustrating when they need they need a blink dagger. They need a gem. They need a boots. They need a BKB. And it's like, you're out of slots already. That's like, you, you barely can afford your items, let alone a neutral item. So having a dedicated neutral item slot is cool. A maximum of one neutral item can be equipped on your hero now. Oh, okay. Uh, interesting. Only one neutral item. So, share the wealth to supports, number one. Um, let's read the rest of these, I think, before we get any farther. There's now a neutral stash item stash in the fountain. Neutral items are stored there instead of on the fountain floor. Right-clicking on an available item in the new UI will place it in your stash slash courier and can be delivered to you. This UI will also show the state and location of all the other items that have dropped. Okay. Neutral items can now be teleported to your neutral item stash at home through a right-click context menu from your backpack or your neutral slot, okay? Backpack, backpack slot count reduced from four to three. Neutral item drop count. Oh, this is a buff to Silk Breaker, actually. Now you can't, uh, you don't have to worry about an item going in that mystery four slot that the game hasn't been updated for. That's sick. Neutral item uh, drop count per tier increased from three to four. Okay, so now there are more items. Ancients neutral drop rates are three times higher. So buff to Ancients um, and doing neutrals there are doing... Uh, yeah, going for neutral items there. The fact that there's more items is technically a good thing for the game. It's going to reduce RNG because your availability of items are higher. Because um, you're going to get more of the neutral items. How many items are there per tier? Like 10 or something? So you're going to be able to pick the best neutral item that you want. It's going to make the game a little bit frustrating because there's going to be times where you're like, oh, fuck, man, I really want this item. Man, this is, this is a huge change. Um, especially the fact that you can only have one item. It's going to be a big difference. All right. This one, maximum one neutral item can be equipped. Find multiple bracers is going to be valuable again. I assume that there's like, uh, you have three backpack slots and a neutral slot is probably how it works, right? Is my assumption. Um, but this is big because it's going to do a lot of things like, there's a lot of hero win rates that are going to change basically. Because you have to imagine that there's a lot of heroes that power jungle, like we'll say, I don't know, Storms, um, Kunkas, they get a lot of neutral items early on, and they just fill their inventory with it. So they have like two or three neutral items, which accelerate their farming. And they will get rid of those items, but that's going to mean that their GPMs are now going to be decreasing, because while they'll be able to grab a lot of neutral items, it's not necessarily going to make their hero stronger. So for heroes that can power jungle and collect these items and get a little bit of a spike, they're going to have to spread that wealth to their team, which is still going to mean that your team has more neutral items, but if your hero is like really necessary for power jungling and channeling all those items into your value, um, it's going to be a little bit weaker. But for mid heroes that can power jungle and then spread those items to the team without losing too much of a power spike, it should be better. Does that make sense? Basically, we're going to see a lot of win rate changes that, that are slightly adjusted that seem small and are going to be based on feeling and they're going to be hard to like just understand right away why they're win rate. So we're going to see a big win rate change, I think, on a couple heroes. It's also going to really affect like heroes like Huskar who hit this power spike and that's part of the reason... <coughs> Huskar got really strong was because you farm armlet which is really cheap you get power treads and you get a halberd so that's like 7,000 net worth or something 1,500 4,000 yeah it's about that's like 8k net worth and then you have three empty item slots and you just fill them with neutral items and if you get the right if you get some good ones it like massively increases your survivability Hooray. so now the heroes like that are going to be a little bit weaker in the mid game and it's going to affect their win rates so heroes that um heroes that quickly run out of item slots are not going to be as dog crap so a good example is maybe Sven. Sven buys a lot of like medium-sized items, runs out of item slots, and can't ever abuse neutral items because he doesn't have the damn slots. But if he has a dedicated neutral item slot, then heroes who have busy item builds are going to be less punished. So Vambrace is now arguably a lot better if it doesn't get changed because Vambrace takes two normal items and puts them into your neutral item slot, right? So hypothetically... It doesn't just remove, it doesn't just give you one new, well, you, it, it basically is uh, uh, good for your regular item slots, but it's bad for your neutral item slot, is, is basically how Vambrace works. 
So Van Brace is different. It's it's so if you have good neutral items that you would rather use, Van Brace is bad. But if you have a lot of item slots, it's kind of nice. I don't know, maybe it's worse. Yeah, the patch is live right now. Um, anyways, let's uh, let's move forward. Remove shrines. Uh, not super unexpected. I like how they separated it to make it really obvious. But no more shrines. That means uh, laning is going to be not. I, I guess shrines didn't activate until like what seven minutes anyway. So it's not really that laning specific anymore. But um, it's definitely going to affect where it feels safe to fight. Um, it's going to be easier. Radiant is going to get a small buff from this, I would argue, because it's easier for them to invade enemy jungle now with that shrine being gone. Whereas the dire invading enemy jungle was um, felt like an auto win because um, that shrine isn't there to defend for Radiant. So it's harder for Radiant to defend their own jungle, their, their safe lane jungle. Um, so this is ultimately good for the game. And it's going to make losing towers a much bigger deal now because then you're not going to be able to TP. So I assume teams are going to really prioritize um, uh, mid-tower defense. Not that they weren't before, but um, outposts move to the primary jungles. Okay, never mind. Everything I just said, I did it. Everything I just said was uh, was irrelevant. Because now if outposts are in the primary jungles, then uh, primary jungles are the ones I was talking about. Radiant right. safe lane. Um, that means that controlling that area is going to be uh, possible because then you'll have uh, TP potential. Although the TPs will be long, right? 1400 flying and 700 ground vision. Same for true sight. Okay, right. so they won't it won't see over trees anymore, basically. Um, and 700 is pretty weak. So the vision is uh, kind of weak, but you'll still be able to control it. Outpost now start is owned by the respective teams and can be captured at any time or where it still happen at the 10 minute mark. Okay, interesting. Well, uh, based on where they're positioned, it could be good for spotting roaming. Um, keep a, Make sure you guys learn what the vision is. That way, if you're roaming between lanes, that you don't get spotted. Um, kind of interesting. Adjust the tree layout on the map edges near the previous outpost areas. Okay. Does that mean side shops are back? Uh, moved a medium camp in the dire primary jungle to a nearby location. So they slightly moved a medium camp. Probably, I don't know if it's a buffer or a to see. Lane boundary winds have been moved to the secondary jungles. Um, I assume lane boundary runes are the ones that were right by the outposts. So that if the secondary jungle would be like your Dyer's right side jungle, like their tri-camp basically. So it probably means that it's interesting. It feels, if, if this is how I imagine it to be, I assume it's going to be easier to grab double bounties again. Removed all GPM talents, which is probably fine, I think. Um, we're going to definitely need some buffs to all see right. some buffs to a couple heroes. Uh, that is a lot of gifted subs. Thank you, Ale. That's 20. Thank you. Um, you're going to hear some hurts. Right. Do I have to turn down the audio again? I was not not expecting a patch stream today, but here we are with 2,000 viewers. Thanks, guys. Um, all right. I'll leave it on for now if it's not too annoying. This patch is not going to be that long, I don't think. Um, there's definitely some hero. Like, I, I'm glad All that right. this is being removed because much like experience talents, it just always feels like you have to take it, which sucks. Um, and it, it's exciting because it's like, oh, nice, I've got a GPM talent, right. but like, I want to be able to like occasionally grab another talent. Like online, I feel always pulled from the GPM talent. CM, you All always right. feel like you have to take the GPM talent, but the other one could be useful some games. So I, I'm frankly kind of happy they're removing them. It's obviously going to upset a lot of hero win All rates, right. which is why they wanted to change the shit right now. Because there's going to be a lot of heroes that will need buffs or nerfs as a result. Um, but All big right. big swings. G XBM talents removed and now GPM talents. Um, added Void Spirit and Snapfire to Captain's Mode. Ooh! Void Spirit will go back to being spammed constantly. Um, his play rate has gone down a little bit. I think it's partially because people got good at playing plane, at plane against him, but I, I don't really feel like he's that much worse myself, personally. Primary jungles are both top. I doesn't make sense to me, but we'll see. Um, hero respawn time increased for levels 1 to 5. Uh, 12 seconds instead of 6. Right. So that's kind of a big deal. That's uh, more punishment for dying, basically. That's n really that's nerfed to me. I die a lot early game. Um, buyback All cost right. increased from 100 plus net worth uh, to 200. So it's more base level for buyback. And late game, right. this is a bigger fraction. The denominator is smaller. So whatever the opposite is, the top one is bigger. All right. No. 
uh so if i have 100 divided by 13 it is going to be a right. bigger number if it's 12 right let me just make sure the hoorays will stop soon i promise guys unless y'all keep ruining my stream right. over here with your donations bastards uh, 100 divided by 12 is 8.3, and 100 divided by 13 is probably smaller. So, yes. So, basically, buyback cost is straight up increased. Right. It's more early game and with low net worth, and it is more late game by a factor of... Uh, minus 7.6... Nine Hooray. two three equals divided by seven point six nine two three. It's like an eight point three percent increase in uh, net worth or buyback cost in uh, for net worth. So kind of a big deal. Okay, uh, courier death no longer disables your passive gold income. Okay, and courier bounty increased. So basically, just more gold gained from sniping couriers. Courier respawn time is increased. Just 10 more seconds. And courier movement speed increased by 10. Courier can no longer plant wards at level 15. And courier can no longer use items at level 25. Weird. So... Hooray. They don't want you to plant wards late game? It's like as you get stronger, you can't plant Hooray. wards. Is that the issue? I mean, nobody used it, but it doesn't mean that people weren't about to start using it. You know, like, eventually pros were going to get good at doing it. And I was starting to warm up to the idea of doing it, like, where I felt comfortable enough. Because that was item slot issues. I mean, they want heroes planning them, I guess. I guess that, yeah, that makes some sense. They want to prevent people from war courier warding. But I was just a little surprised that they went back on it. Courier can no longer use items at 25. To prevent some, like, weird late game shit, I guess. Um, implemented custom UI for charge based abilities rather than using buffs okay that would be um like shrapnel that kind of stuff fire remnants that kind of things and the attacks now have a 150 bonus range against observer and centers okay that's really nice even easier to deward um as melee heroes so a little bit of a buff to melee supports which is just nice to have that way if you sentry the high ground you can get them easier tier 5 items now drop at 60 minutes okay I am not surprised to see this because 70 minute that we saw a lot of 70 minute games at the major. There was a lot of 70 minute games, but it is rare to get to 70 minutes and it feels like such a long jump. So them being at 60 minutes, I think is nice. I assume that they're all going to get a little bit nerfed as a result because a 60 minute game is not uncommon. So I kind of expected this to happen eventually. It's a little surprising it's happening after there were so many 70 minute games, but for pubs at least, there are not that many 70 minute games because your average pub player is uncoordinated and makes a lot of mistakes. So people will die, feed, blah, blah, blah. Pro games, less common. They're better at turtling. Games will go longer. So we're gonna see a lot. We saw a lot of tier five items in pro games, not so many in pubs from what I've seen. Um, I've only experienced like two or three, I think. Not that I played a shitload of games, but Anyways, um, now drops full item around the recipe. I think this was kind of needed. It was actually kind of an expensive item. Uh, reducing the stat by one, I think, is completely fine. Um, drop the full item. Yeah, if you had had to pay money for your one item slot, your one neutral item, it would have been garbage. Arcane Rune plus two int. No longer has the quell passive, now gives you 15 attack speed. Okay, that's not bad. I mean, they had to buff this because nobody was going to keep the damn Iron Talon in their, as their neutral item. Because, like, basically all of these have to be buffed because you can't use all of them. Before, if you have three item slots, you'd be like, oh, throw in the Arcane Rune, throw in the Iron Wood, throw in the Keen Optic, because I have them, whatever. But now if you only have one, it's like, why would I ever take Iron Talon? Even if it was the previous with Quelling, it's like, why would I ever take that? It's for two armor. But 15 attack speed? Eh. Maybe there's some heroes where that's okay. Keen Optic, more mana regen. Um, Arcane Ring seems not bad. Iron tree, mango tree, vision range reduced. Mango snowfall a little further out. Okay. Um, they basically nerfed it because this is an item, like consumable items like mango tree and the royal jelly are arguably better now because you're not limited on those. They're, they just work, right? They work automatically. They don't combine. So I assume we'll see that we're seeing a baby nerf to mango tree. I assume we'll see a nerf to royal jelly too. Um, poor man's shield massively buffed. Block damage up to 30 for melee and 20 for range. So that's pretty cool. 
starts to make poor man's shield look a little bit uh, good. Trusty shovel straight up nerfed. Almost every other item buffed basically, except for mango tree. Trusty shovel is straight up nerfed. If you just pass the trusty shovel around, man, you just get even getting like a pack of TP scrolls. It feels really good. So you're like, oh shit, I just saved. Uh, oh, it's a two pack. It's not a three anymore. It used to be three, I think. Uh, but yeah, trusty shovel, very good. Ocean heart buffed back up. Hell yeah, eight four. Very good on Slardar Ags. Kind of. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's becoming slightly better. Dragon Scale after murder damage increase. I think they need to do this. Dragon Scale is good because of the armor. is really nice. Because it's, it's a little bit difficult to get free armor right now. And that's typically an, uh, a stat that everybody wants. But um, increasing the damage I think is completely fine. Um, Nick pointed out to me once that uh, it on Illusion Heroes is really good. Because you can set an Illusion and hit a tower. So you can uh, kill towers pretty quick um, with like slow harass. Not quick, but you know, for really easy harass using dragon skill, that's cool. Uh, clumsy on cast range reduce, that's really needed, I think. Um, 900 is kind of bonkers. I mean, the, the projectile range is really slow, but um, it was ridiculously good on like Marana and Pudge, and I think 650 is a lot more reasonable, personally. Um, no longer pierces immunity on yourself. I think that's fine. That way you can uh, BKB it off or... Because if you're if you use clumsy net before, you just net yourself no matter what. So I think this is a, a good um, halfway point. Essence ring now increases current and max health directly and is not considered a heal, and it does not get amplified or triggered by heal related abilities. Okay, so um, this item was starting to become kind of busted. Basically, the fact that it doesn't heal anymore is important for a couple reasons. Number one. Um, you could basically use it as a regen item before. If you're missing 1,000 health, you pop Essence Ring, you heal for 425, and then after it runs out, your max HP goes down, but the heal doesn't. So you basically, it's a, it's a it's a HP regen item. So over the course of like, oh, I lose a team fight, but I can still farm the map, you could use Essence Ring repeatedly to eventually heal. Now you can't do that anymore. It's only going to increase your temporary HP, and then it will go back down afterwards, which means you could basically see, I use Essence Ring, I go down to 100 HP, battle is over and then once essence ring runs out i'm probably going to go back down to 100 h or back down to 1 hp i assume yeah uh, it'll be like turning off armlet so you're going to see clips on reddit within a week where people's essence ring will run out and then they will instantly die to a creep uh bet that for sure is helping happening um the other important thing is that if you have a um uh holy locket uh, you will not be able to increase the amount that you heal from Essence Ring. That one is a rare case. But in the case of Chen, for example, Essence Ring is really good because it uh, uh, would be the amount that it healed would be increased by your aura. Um, if you combo it with an IO, Essence Ring is not good anymore. It's not, it's not busted anymore. It used to be busted because it would heal you for 425, which means that paired IO tethered to somebody, you get 425 times 1.5 heal. So you'd basically be able to heal somebody for like 600 some it was busted on io it's very good on necro as well because necro also got heal bonuses from a second skill but necro wasn't good enough in the meta so we didn't really see it abused that much but it was really busted on necro also also it's still good on necro um just not as good as it was before um so this is kind of it's kind of needed to happen because there were just a couple in cases where essence ring was like stupidly broken io was the main one um and you'll still possibly want essence ring on io but it's not going to heal your ally anymore it's only going to heal your hero so it's straight up a lot worse on IO, but the item is still kind of balanced. So, eh. Don't you think you lose the HP? It says it increases your current and max health, which means, and it's not considered a heal, which means that when it's over, it's going to decrease your current and max health, I assume. Or it's just worded like this so that it isn't busted on IO. It's possible it still heals you. It's definitely possible it still heals you. Um, but I assume it doesn't decrease health. Just tested. Okay. All right. I'm wrong. Um, so they basically changed it and worded it like this so that it doesn't become, it's not busted on IO anymore, which is fine. Um, it's a little bit confusing. It, they basically, this is the important part and is not considered a heal and does not get amplified. So they basically said, like, it's not a heal anymore. Van Brace now drops the full item rather than a recipe, can be toggled between the different attributes. Okay. Um, so, interesting. This is better for the item. Um, everything I said earlier about Van Brace is irrelevant now because it doesn't combine. Ba dropping it is less garbage because... Uh, God, we're going to need fucking hotkeys for our... Um, 
neutral item slots now. Um, dropping is less garbage now because you don't have to have those those combiners. You don't have to have those double things. You don't have to look around the map and be like, who can even build this thing? Um, which means that, uh, but the fact that you can tread switch it is really nice. You can toggle it between the different attributes. The important thing, even though the stats are slightly worse, you're getting two less primary and one less secondary. So it's like four less stats total. It's not that bad. The important thing is that you are calm, you're changing between the bonuses, the magic resistance bonus, the spell on bonus, and the attack speed bonus. So now Hi. more so than ever, uh, 11 gifted subs from Remy. Thank you, man. Um, what's, what's basically different is that you can switch. Not only it makes sense to switch switch the strength for the magic resistance because you're getting HP as well, but if you're getting magic resistance on top of that, right. it just makes even more sense. Um, switching to Agi is a twenty attack speed bonus. Switching to Int gives you like six right. and a little bit spell amp. So if you're casting spells, it makes even more sense. So it's another way to it's another treads basically. We could see some really cool stuff with like tread right. switching and vampire switching heal kind of stuff. It is uh, pretty decent. Uh, vampire spikes. Vampire Spanx, Vampire right. Fangs, Spell Lifesteal, reduced from 8 to 6. Um, that 8% that was a little bit too good on the right heroes, I would argue. Um, it doesn't All necessarily... Right. Oh, and the reason this was basically busted was because before, that 8% was like good but not incredible, and the reason being that the, the base All item right. by itself was not so broken that... Uh, that it was like, oh, I'll, I'll always carry this over All other right. items. The fact that it's a separate item now could have been busted. Because on the right heroes, like anybody that carries a Radiance, um, like All if you right. are a Lash Track or something, and you if you could just always have 8% spell lifesteal, it makes your hero like straight up busted. So the fact that it's All like right. not an item slot and doesn't give you 8% spell up is going to be a lot more fair. Bristleback, for example, the spell lifesteal was like really good on him, All but he right. also has a little star for items. So I think that's going to be... Um, uh, a big advantage. Enchanted Quiver, hell yeah, buff and a nerf. Fixed it working with Wukong's Command. It was very good with Wukong's Command because your Wukong's dudes would hit you for 270 magic damage every 8 seconds and then you run through like 6 of them and it's like, oh shit, you just took 1500 magic damage. It's fucking crazy. Um, but they increased the damage again because the item is still kind of bad. On the bright side, the fact that it is now a empty item slot makes this item not bad anymore because now it's just straight up there. Every 8 seconds you can do 300 bonus magic damage. That's not bad. And True Strike, and 400 range for that attack. I think Enchanted Quiver is now decent. Any of these items that were like kind of garbage before because their item slot issues are just going to become better, I assume. Um, maybe you could argue that if they were item slot, if it, item slot considerations are befo important before, they're probably still important now because you're still weighing it against other items. Would I rather have Enchanted Quiver or would I rather have Essence Ring? But I don't know. For supports, at least some of these things feel decent. Like I'll just throw a clumsy net on your in your on your side for the rest of the game. Orbit destruction nerfed, not too surprising. The slow aspect of it is the easiest way to nerf it. If you get this item on the right hero, like a TA or a Clinks or something, orbit destruction was really really good. Um, and to be honest, most of the time I don't pay much attention to the slow when I'm using this item because a lot of times I'm using it on a ranged hero. There's not that many melee deso buyers, I guess. But um, straight up, the the slow aspect was a little bit. It, it's it's still good without the self. Minus five armor is a lot. Craigie nerf though, I think this is this is uh by most people argued one of the best neutral items to drop. Thirteen free armor that you just get is amazing. Um, the fact that it'll be a uh, a neutral item slot is even better. Man, I just love. I, I gotta say, I just love having um item slot problems removed. No, having not having TP there is nice, and now not having neutral items is just really nice because supports. It was just I always felt very cramped on items. Magic wand boots. Observer wards I always like to keep in my inventory. Oftentimes you need a quelling blade to be uh, warding and dewarding at good speed and, and having to worry about like, man, do I throw in Craigie Coat or Essence Ring or just felt like I was always very limited. Uh, Mindbreaker Silence being reduced. I used to think like the two second silence is like, is that even a big deal? It's only two seconds. But the fact that you can do it as fast as a hit can be a big deal sometimes. I, I was watching a replay, I think, and there was a storm that got killed because he had Lincolns, but he got Mindbreaker silenced. And that was enough time for him not to realize, like, oh shit, I'm silenced. Um, that uh, he ended up getting chain stunned and killed. So reducing that duration, I think, is completely fine. Because the Mindbreaker is still valuable by itself. Um, telescope attack range bonus reduced. This is because it's now no longer a slot issue. So I think nerfing it again, I think, is completely fine. Um, repair kit building repair no longer has a multi-shot. Okay. Um, probably fair. A lot of people complained about this item, basically. Uh, just because it, 
I mean, it just kills entire creep waves. The fact that if it only repairs now, if you can't kill the creep wave, like, you could just cast it on your tower and walk away, and it's fine. But now you're actually going to have to, like, cast it on your tower and clear the creep wave, and then you'll be fine. Because it's it's only going to give you, yeah, it just gives you, it gives you 10 armor, and it gives you regen. That's it. It does passively give you more regen, so that's kind of nice, I would argue, for some supports. Um, 17 is quite a bit, or other cores, potentially. But uh, definitely a valid nerf to the item. It, better to nerf it this way than just to remove it, I think. Because it still has decent value. Just armor and 40% and, and health, that's fine, I think. Have a camera getting a buff, because it's typically not a four, tier 4 item that you ever want to hold. Um, there are very rare cases where it's good. I played a Tide game yesterday or the day before where it was actually good, because I had... Um, I, it was like the two crappiest uh, tier 4 items. Have a camera, and what was the other one? Uh, um, the sword one that gives you attack speed. The leveler. I had the leveler and I had Havoc Hammer. And it actually worked out because I had like AC, I had the bonus 250 damage, I had Greaves and Pipe and like one other item, Ags, I think. So it was like I had two item slots and I was like Havoc Hammer, sure. Health, which is really good for Tide. It gives me a second AoE and then um, the, uh, the leveler made me do a lot more damage to towers and gave me attack speed, which you kind of need on a Tide anyways. That's doing DPS, so... Um, Havoc Hammer typically bad, but the, the nicest thing about it is that it does do, it's another AoE. You can clear creep waves with it. So if you're a hero that doesn't clear creep waves so well, Havoc Hammer can be decent late game. Um, defensively, it's not the most incredible because a lot of cores that jump on you are going to have immunity or going to be able to stay on top of you. But for pushing pushing creep wave wise, Havoc Hammer is incredible. I'd really like it on an Undying, I would argue. Undying it's really good um, late game if you haven't bought a Meteor Hammer, which most Undying shouldn't because it's going to give you a way to actually clear creep waves. So there's definitely some supports where Havoc Hammer I could see being like the item to grab, for sure. Uh, flicker movement speed bonus here, which is fine. That's pretty incredible, though. You can just toss that on and have like 40 extra base move. 40, 40 base movement speed is incredible, how much uh, movement speed that gives you. Uh, Magic Lamp, I think, is generally kind of bad, so I think it's fine that they've buffed the health threshold. 15, like... I look at this item as like a 700 heal, and obviously like the dispel is nice and all, but like when you're that low in health, typically you're going to die anyways, so. But the fact that it doesn't take an item slot is kind of nice, because now you can better um, stay alive. Um, nerf to Apex, we're into tier 5 items now. Keep in mind that these are going to be worse because they drop at the 60 minute mark now instead of the 70 minute mark, so they're just straight up going to be less effective. Um, but Apex definitely was the primary thing that people complained about during the major when people would get Apex and either draw or Morphling. Be uh, and now it gives you plus 75 primary attribute instead of a percentage. So this is important because now Apex is more or less more even between all heroes because now it's not based on if you get it on a hero that happens to already have a lot of primary attribute. If it increases you by percentage and you already have a lot of that attribute, it would give you more than it to other hero. But And it's still going to be better on Morphling than other heroes typically because you have... Um, I mean, it's not that much better on Morphling than it used to be. But Morphling still likes 75 more agility because it allows them to shift more from strength to agility and also because uh, you have an E-Blade which does the damage and your second skill does damage based on how much agility you have. So Apex is still better on Morphling and it's still better on Draw Ranger, but it's not going to give you like 200 agility anymore. Versus a Viper that gets an Apex, he doesn't really give that much of a shit because he's like, and I've only got like 100 agility anyways, it would only give me 80 agility. Now that Apex is more comparable on a Viper than it would be on other heroes. And it's still going to be good on some of those heroes because it's still like a ridiculous amount of armor. It's like, uh, I don't know, 75 times divided by 6.25, I think. So it'll still give you like 12 armor on an Agi hero. Um, but probably, it's definitely necessary. It's going to make these items less ridiculous, which is cool to think about, but also potentially less <laughs> less uh, massively abusive. Um, Fusion Rune straight up removed. Probably too good on a couple heroes. It was, I, I saw... At least two games where they got Fusion Rune and Apex, which together were ridiculous. Because Fusion Rune, all this extra Apex damage would then be doubled by Fusion Rune. It was like, you just do too much. A um, little too busted. Uh, Ballista getting nerfed. Um, attack range down to 250. I think this was this was another neutral item that I was genuinely worried about a little. Because I thought of some like cases with range heroes, like a sniper in the base who has Ballista. I'm like, this just doesn't sound fun, right? 400 attack range is insane. Um... It does do 30 pure damage now, so it slightly offsets that, but 
for the average range tier of ballistas maybe it's good um force boots cooldown has increased again these do plus 40 percent movement speed which is better than bot's and it dispels you and pushes you so it's a force staff and completely removes speed limit and that's it so the movement speed is reduced by 10 the push distance is reduced to 600 i haven't even seen this in a game yet um ex machina it's the armor and resets all cooldown on all items except for a short refresher the reset has gone up to 45 seconds the armor gain is reduced by five and it has a hundred mana cost now so okay that sounds completely fair like adding mana cost to items like this is is completely fine uh mirror shield massively nerfed maybe not massively but eight second cooldown now for the Lo lotus lincolns the block and reflect a spell it's still plus 20 all attributes which is quite good i must say i think this uh mirror shield is quite good um pirate hat attack speed reduced from 250 to 150 I played against a pirate hat once, that shit was scary. Doesn't drop a bounty rune on hero kills, but you steal 300 gold from heroes you kill. Okay, I like this, I like this. Still a little bit of a pirate theme, but less chaotic and more targeted. Um, the the tooltip is straight up wrong, but uh, that's okay. Steal 300 gold from heroes you kill. Um, I mean, we're talking 60 minutes in the game, right? And this is still a pretty good item. 150 attack speed is more in the realm of normal normalcy but uh, still will be good. Seerstone, this is another neutral item that is a support I wanted to carry all the time, but I just didn't feel like I had the slot. I got it one game when I was Avenge, and I was like, I've got Blink and Force and Boots. It's like, I don't have slots for the Seerstone. It felt really bad, so um, happy to use this on the right hero. Phoenix Ash just got removed. Maybe too busted. I heard some people say that it was broken. It's like, if you're about to die, you don't die, and then you heal the half health, and your non-ultimate ability cooldowns reset. But it didn't give stats, so it was just like, nobody wanted to drop this item, kind of, except for maybe pro players, I feel like. Um, Desolator, damage reduced, and armor reduction reduced, and the duration is reduced. Probably is completely fine. I mean, it's a 60-minute item now instead of 70. It still is very good, because the minus armor is going to combine with other sources. The duration didn't really need to last for 15 seconds, it's really long. Still a very good item, but its damage is more comparable to Deso. It's, it's plus 75 instead of plus 60, but still, minus 10 armor is massive. There's going to be some games now where, like, people are... I think this is going to be the next item that people complain about, because people are complaining about... What was that other item? The other minus armor one? Uh, Orb of Destruction. Because when you get Orb of Destruction, when you already have a lot of minus armor, the damage that it increases you, like, really pushes you in the stratosphere, and there's going to be some cases now where that also happens with Stygian, where we see Stygian plus um, Orb of Destruction... Oh, but you can't stack them now, right? Because that makes it worse. I mean, if I'm playing like TA or Clinks, I'm still probably going to use Orb of Destruction because the stacking minus 5 armor is still busted. But I guess that means that I'd have to swap it out late game. All right, uh, Wilden Strider is nerfed by health regen, and the tree duration goes down to 15 seconds. So it can't be permanent trees anymore. Um, nerf to Fallen Sky has the same blink rules with regards to damage. Before, you could blink away even if taking damage. That aspect is actually quite good, I suppose. And now drops the full item rather than the recipe. So, that's already... I mean, this... The fact that it drops the full item rather than the recipe, that alone has already massively improved this item. Because when you drop Fallen Sky, somebody's going to have a blink dagger on your team, probably. But then they'd have to spend like 2,500 gold, 2,600 gold to make the Fallen Sky. So if it just drops, that's like a blink dagger. Somebody sells their blink dagger and picks this shit up. Or somebody sells their meteor hammer and picks this shit up. Um, and I think it's fine that they've uh, matched it to what blink dagger does. I think that makes sense uh, in terms of the damage thing. Because it's probably would make a couple matchups just like busted. Like if your team has weak catch or weak disable, and they could blink away every time, it's just obnoxious. And these are good trade-offs in my opinion. It's like makes it more playable in games, makes it feel like you drop something good. And... Um, doesn't have the potentially busted mechanic. Trident all bonuses reduced from 33 to 30. So small nerf. This does, however, mean it doesn't drop the full item rather than the recipe. Trident still will drop a recipe, so you still have to upgrade it yourself, which is one of the negatives, but it gives slightly less bonuses. Um, the self-HP regen and lifesteal amp is the same percentage, I believe, as Sanj. The mana cost, mana loss reduction is higher, and the spell amp is way higher. The spell amp is like 14% higher. The mana cost mana loss, I think, is like 8 higher or something. Mm 
yeah, eighteen percent spell amp, fourteen percent mana. But in terms of the the regen, yeah, they had to leave it at thirty probably because it was too scary. It's gonna jump my slider. Oops. Okay, uh, Necronom, Book of the Dead, change this shit, it's bad. Change from three sets of Necronom units to two sets with 50% more health and damage. Alright, that's better. The problem with three was like, there, with, you spawned six Necros, there were 200 gold each. If somebody can kill those without dying, that's 1,200 gold. Is that two? 400 times three. Yeah, 1,200 gold. So now if you drop two sets, they're still going to give 800 gold, but they are individually more tanky. So if I have six that do one damage... But now I have four that do 1.5 damage. That is six damage. Yeah, I still do six damage. So 50% health and damage means that they still have the same health and damage, but they are individually more tanky. So this is a good change. And then they slightly nerf the item. Um, certainly will make it better. And the fact that you drop four items now from tier four, it, no matter what you drop, it's still going to be decent. And you don't have to feel bad. Oh, fuck, I got a Book of the Dead. It would have been better to have Book of the Dead and Deso on the same, you know, um, so now if somebody drops a Book of the Dead, they can use the damn item if they want. Like a, a Beastmaster would be really happy to get Book of the Dead, I think. But a lot of other heroes would not. But it's, it's straight up going to be more useful now. Uh, Mango Restore nerfed. Uh, this is uh, as a result of Mango being pretty damn necessary on all heroes. Really good in the laning stage. And also busted in... Um, that's another example. Really good laning stage, mostly the laning stage, I guess. You bring mangoes out and like heal your hero. It's going to make it a little bit harder to abuse. Ma oh, the fact that they stack is the other thing that really changed mangoes a lot. Um, it's basically less pain in the ass to cycle mangoes into your inventory and then use them repeatedly. So um, pro players would use it to basically accelerate their game a lot, kind of similar to what it was like watching OpenAI. They would accelerate their game using mangoes um, to reduce downtime and not have to like play passively and use a clarity. So this will slow the game down a little bit um, and certainly affect the laning stage. Uh, so Mango's a little bit worse. And I, I like that they nerfed the mana restore rather than increasing the gold cost or something because it's gonna it would have upset a lot of item builds. Um, it just straight up is going to be a little bit e easier. Uh, I'm reading the next one. Coin Blade no longer kills wards. Same for Iron Talon and Battle Fury. Interesting. Um, so we'll read below. I, maybe this is just straight up all you need to know is that you can't tangle wards anymore, but it's going to make range heroes better at warding and dewarding. Um, it's going to make fighting over observer wards and sentries easier or harder. Harder, depending on the heroes. Having attack speed is is more advantageous. Being ranged and, and, and higher attack speed is straight up better. And uh, the, part of the reason they removed this, I think, and them removing this was necessary while also giving melee heroes the ability to attack farther up until to, to kill wards. So because melee heroes can attack wards from slightly farther away now. Was that 300? Am I crazy? It was like 100. I think it was like 150. Melee heroes. Have I missed it? 150 range. Which is, melee heroes attack about 150 range already. So it's that means they'll attack from 300 units away. Which is better than TA. TA does not get this bonus, by the way, before she gets her attack range. So uh, that's going to make it harder to ward and deward, but melee heroes will still have the capability without needing to buy a Quelling Blade. I'm happy they removed this personally as a support because I had to buy Quelling Blade to be competitive about wards and sentries, even if I'm a ranged hero. And the fact that they've removed it means that I don't have to buy it to be competitive for wards and sentries. So it's another, another thing that um, makes item slots less problematic, number one. And number two... Um, it's going to be a little bit harder to ultra rapidly kill the warden sentries. Also supports and heroes can no longer kill sentries in the middle of nowhere in darkness without revealing their hero position. Or like you could basically look on the map and be like, oh, my sentry just disappeared. Somebody quelling it, right? But if they attack it, you get vision of the hero and that's different because you know what hero is killing it. So right. people can't kill observer wards and sentries without revealing their hero anymore, even while smoked, for example. So um, this is a pretty big deal. It's going to affect how pro players move and look for fights a little bit when they smoke and go try to find enemy heroes and kill enemy heroes. Um, the ward game is going to be a little bit more complicated because people are going to have to stand there and attack wards. So defending like a high ground with observers and sentries is going to be so much easier because somebody's going to have to come up and love tap that ward twice to kill it, for example. Um, high attack speed here are going to be really helpful on some of those sports. So interesting. Uh, Vlad's mana regen is reduced. 
which I think is probably fair. Item is decent. Uh, void Stone, Perseverance, Mana Regen increased. I think this is kind of neat. Void Stone did not give much Mana Regen compared to a lot of other items, so it getting a buff I think is fine. Perseverance also increased comparatively. Oh, they actually have the same mana, so buying, just buying a Void Stone is straight up kind of a lot of mana right now. It's like half a clarity. Battle Fury damage increased. Cleave damage against heroes increased by 10. And cre uh, cleave against creeps well now. So rather than have, rather than buff or nerf the cleave damage as a flat level, they've adjusted it against creeps or against heroes. So it's a little bit weaker against creeps now. Which basically means that buying Battle Fury on um, somebody like Kunkka is technically better than it used to be. Your damage is going to be a lot more complicated now, basically. Um, and they're buffing um, Battle Fury because almost nobody buys Battle Fury right now. Maelstrom is pretty much always better, even on melee heroes like uh, Lifestealer, for example. But that makes sense for other reasons, but still, Battle Fury is generally an underused item. Um, you could maybe argue this is a little bit reduction to attack to, to farm speed for like anti-mages and stuff, because you're cleaving less against creeps by 10%, but you're also getting 6 more damage, so... Eh. Uh, Maelstrom, and yeah, better for fighting. Um, this is also, one good thing about this is it's, it's going to make it a lot better against PLs, for example, like I was saying earlier in the cast. Battle Fairies against PLs, or Cleave against PLs, are just not very good, because they it, it applies to his armor, and he already has uh, agility heroes. Uh, illusion agility heroes are always going to have high armor, therefore Battle Fairies are not very good against them. So this will make a little bit of a, a advantage there, to, that you can buy Battle Fairies on melee heroes against PL, and have a better chance against them. Uh, Maelstrom chain lightning damage reduced by 10 again, down to 140. So Maelstrom even worse on Wind Ranger compared to MKB. It's an important point. It's not that big of a deal, but it's an important point. Um, snipers will be sad, but generally just a lot of heroes that buy Maelstrom. We might see some build changes coming in. Uh, Necronomicon more mana regen by quite a bit. One more point at each level. So Necro can be a little bit better to buy on your Lycans and Beastmasters. Desolator armor reduction duration reduced, same as uh, what happened to um, Stygian Desolator. So not the biggest deal, I don't think, but kind of curious why this is happening. Maybe a consistency thing, that they're looking at the duration, and they're kind of like, does this really need to be 15 seconds? But very curious why it's being reduced. I'm not quite sure. Might just be a little bit of like house cleaning kind of stuff where they're like, yeah, this should probably not be 15 seconds. Um, if you buy Deso on like Puck, for example, and it lasts for 15, it's really good to phase shift everybody and hit them with Deso, but less so now. Anyways, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Radiance damage reduced by 5. Just slight nerfs here. These are like little spring cleaning kind of things. Blade mail damage increased by a lot, plus 6 damage. Interesting. So Intero's buying this item will get 38 damage. The item is still generally weak, unless you're playing your legion commanders, or your axes. But it's, this will push it slightly towards being a more viable item to just have, and it won't feel as bad if it doesn't work. Like, this is actually one of the best stat efficient items in the whole fucking game, for sure. It's a 2,000 gold item. You're putting a 4 armor item into it, a 6 int item, and a, I believe, what, 18 damage item? So you're getting 10 free damage, 2 free armor, and 4 free int from combining these. That's pretty huge increases. We don't see a lot of big jumps like that anymore. Everything is generally pretty muted for the bonuses that you get. Um, Silver Edge buffed again, 45 damage, becoming a pretty decent damage item. Mask of Madness, five more damage. Ooh, Mask of Madness sniper coming back. That's not not bad base base item. 15 damage, 10 attack speed. 110 attack speed from the Berserk. I really liked playing uh, Mask of Menace, Deso, Sniper in the past, and then I would go Satanic. But the problem is that Satanic doesn't give you 50 damage anymore. So that build is kind of dead. Because it would hit... So if you if you snowballed a little bit, it, hit, it would hit such a good timing. But yeah, that build's probably dead. Maelstrom is just so much better. But with Maelstrom nerfs and Mask of Menace buffs, could see a turnaround. Armlet giving more base damage. So this is interesting. Um, Armlet heroes are not in that bad, bad a place, uh, except for CK. CK is in the dumpster, but, and speaking of which, CK is probably here that's going to win out from this um, neutral item change, because he doesn't collect neutral items very fast, he's more of a laner, and the fact that he can't, he needs a lot of smaller, medium-sized items too, so he can't necessarily abuse all the empty item slots like a lot of other heroes can. So, 
Um, buffs to armlet are going to be nice. But I would also, not necessarily they need to do this, but making armlet a better item for non-strength heroes is kind of cool too. Six more damage here is uh, six more damage on anybody that buys armlet. There's not a lot of heroes that want to increase their strength that massively that aren't strength heroes as well though. But, hey amen, whatever. Six more damage, I'm not going to complain. Nine is a little weird. So this means that when you turn it on now, it gives you, as a strength hero, it gives you 40 damage plus 31. So it's a 71 damage item now instead of a 65 damage item. It's pretty good. Neutral's down to one per hero. Just get rid of him at this point. Nah, dude, that doesn't make sense. You're overreacting. You just don't like neutral items for whatever reason. What's important about it is that like neutral items are going to be more fun to play with now than they were before. And I think they're fine. It's fine that they're in the game. Like I get that like there I, I reacted this way as well where neutral items got put and I was like, man, now all these if I'm having a bad game, if I'm a support, I'm gonna get these free items. That's cool. But now it's created there's too many kind of, so it's kind of it buffs heroes that have uh, empty item slots, and it made item slots just a little bit too busy at various stages of the game, especially in the ultra late game. Item slots just got too busy. And this is gonna simplify it and help remove some of those outside cases basically, which I think is fine and good for the game. Right. Um, I think it's I think it's really not that big of a deal. Like, I, I like that neutral item. I think it's fine that neutral items are in the game. I think it's kind of cool. It's like another way to like, it's another way to build your item, like make your hero strong in weird ways. And I, I think that's always fun to have when there's a little bit of creativity because every game should not just be building the same fucking items. It doesn't happen very often these days, but I, I like that there's more ways to get around that. Um, damage increase for Crystallis by 8. The critical strike is reduced a little. And Daedalus, right. raw damage increase, crit, crit a little bit weaker. Thank you for the subs, guys. Why only one neutral slot? That's too little, because... Because then it'll, if, if there's like two neutral item slots, it's going to be the same shit as what last patch was. It's like every core is going to have two neutral item slots and nobody else is going to have any. And they're just going to sit on those two all game. And then it, it'll be like, oh, like if, you, if they have two neutral item slots as well, it'd be effectively like cores having eight slots that's crazy like you could like people actually are people have seven slots now effectively one of them is going to be a neutral item that you don't have massive control and maybe isn't the perfect item you want but giving two neutral item slots would be crazy that's that's an eight slot everybody would just buy two bracers at the start of the game and then they and like all the cores would be like eight slotted mid game you never see those items again um until they get better ones uh bloodthorn damage increased as well by seven as a result of the crystallis buff and crit strike reduced a little bit, and soul rend crit strike reduced a little bit too. So, items that are just a little bit better, less reliant on crit, which is basically going to mean that these items are better to purchase on heroes that aren't, that don't really abuse the crit strike really well. Like Kunko, for example, abuses crit strike really well, but you can feel better buying Daedalus on maybe some support, or not support, like a sniper or some straight DPS hero, for example. Okay. Hero changes, uh, Abaddon base damage reduced by 2, Miss Coil cooldown increased by 1. Keep in mind Abaddon was picked and banned a little bit, um, as were other save heroes, so I was not... I, I'm sad about Abaddon's support being a little bit weak right now, but um, he did need to get nerfed before, and he's going to receive another nerf here because he's been played in the pro scene. Um, Alchemist strength gain increased. Um, Alchemist was a hero where I was thinking about Pirate hat being fucking ridiculous, actually, because if Pirate hat dropped at 60 minutes and you get bounty runes, on kills, and if you get Elk kills, holy shit. Elk already has so much money, it would have been, like, insane to drop this, like, to pick to pick Elk and be like, there's a decent chance that the game goes, there's a chance that this game goes to 60 minutes, and I could get Pirate Hat, and the game is over, you know? And so I'm glad they reduced that. I think that's maybe what they were thinking about when they re removed that from the game. Because 70 minutes, you don't plan for 70-minute games. They, they, they're, they're crazy. But, like, if it's 60 minutes, there's not a bad chance that he drops a Pirate Hat. Um, Ice, uh, Ancient... Uh, apparition is buffed on paper. Uh, the kill threshold for Ice Blast has gone up by 2%, which is pretty nice. Uh, but he loses his GPM talent at 10. That's 90 GPM lost. That's a pretty big deal. Um, and now he gets 175 Chilling Touch attack range if he wants it. That would be when you use your third skill, the range goes up. I believe the range that it gives goes up to 240, so this is a pretty big change. 175 is a lot. I could see this talent being quite good because it's going to help you stay away when um, doing kills. But in the same vein, 10% spell amp is ridiculously good. Well, I guess if you go ags, you always go the right talent because it lowers your, it removes your chilling touch cooldown. So this is uh, that talent being included is going to be a better 
argument for ags AA cores in some fashion because now you're going to start straight up sniping people 175 range plus 240 that's like what 440 minus 25 so 415 attack speed if you buy ags on a and you get that talent you have 400 extra attack range when you already attack for 675 basically AA is now sniper so we're going to see some um, ags builds for sure um, coming from AAs now not necessarily sure which items they're going to buy but um with that said, for A supports, this is going to be a bit of a nerf. Obviously, your Ice Blast is better, but um, I think as an A support, I would probably want to get Spell Amp. But Chilling Touch attack range is not bad. Spell Amp is really good, because if you have Magic Resistance, Reduction, and Spell Amp, they combo together very well. So I've, I've sometimes liked getting the 10% Spell Amp on A anyways. So I'd probably still get Spell Amp. I would guess it's going to have a higher win rate, but the Chilling Touch attack range is not bad for safety reasons. But the main thing for A is you're just not going to get very far in this game a anymore because you're not, never going to get the GPM talent. So that'll hurt A's a little bit. Um, Axe movement speed increased again by 5, and his strength gains. Well, I believe he's got quite a few movement speed buffs now. He's 310. That's quite rapid. He used to be like 295, I think, or 290. I think he used to be 290. So this is a big big increase for good old Axe. Uh, keep in mind, Blade Mill got buffed, so a leather, another little advantage for him. A little bit more strength gain, so could help in the laning. Uh, Bounty Hunter base armor increased by one. His base armor is already really high. I'm really happy they increased Bruise, actually. Uh, Bounty Hunter's base armor increased by one. Really high armor. Um, 7.4 now. I, I think Bounty's okay if you go Ags myself. Um, pro players are not doing it, but I genuinely believe that going like Phase phase Wand Winless, maybe a bottle, into an Ags as the offlane Bounty Hunter gives you a really strong mid-game fight. Like your fighting is so strong. So buffs to Bounty Hunter, I think I'm down for. I'll keep doing that shit and winning my games. Uh, Brewmaster's base armor is just garbage. It's like 2. 2.5. So the the bracers that you buy don't actually increase your survivability that much. That said, you do have a skill that gives you evasion. So you could argue that with evasion, the hero is very difficult to, uh, to kill. When 3-3 is playing him, he maxed Cinderbrew with Drunken Brawler. And then he transitioned into like 6 aura items. Which I found to be... It seems to be better than the playstyle that I do on Brew, which is I max the first two skills and like spam spells to try to out harass the carry. But with the change to Cinder Brew, it's a little bit harder to do this because the mana cost is so high. So I think the way that he did it seemed better. Um, but with that said, I don't necessarily think that it means that Brewmaster is in a good place yet. So I think uh, buffing the hero is good, even though the hero was played. Base armor increased by one is helpful. Because the hero just doesn't... I, I maybe still would have liked to see the 20 talents changed. It just feels so hard to go right-click brew. Maybe, maybe there are some viabilities going some like other position in Brewmaster where like you kind of ignore your ulti a little bit. Like you don't. You basically have to go like Radiance or something if you want to go like core Brewmaster. That way your right clicks are still good, but you don't lose all of your item net worth by using your ulti. So maybe like Radiance into auras if you wanted to play some like core Brewmaster, and then you can go the like at hundred attack speed and the drunken brawler crit strike damage later. But, anyways, one armor will help any Brewmaster, no matter which playstyle you're going for. So I'm happy to see him buffed. I'm glad that he got buffed, and I guess he wasn't winning that much. Radiance AC, yeah, that makes sense. You can have Trident and other neutral items at the same time. Oh, cool. Um, I suppose that makes sense, right? Because it uh, combines. That's a really good point. We'll see if they nerf that. It could. You could argue that your items combine to your neutral item slot. If they fix that, if assuming it's a bug... If they let Trident go into your neutral item slot, you'd be putting net worth in your backpack. It'd be truly a, a really good level 7 item. Maybe not. It's, it's an interesting thought, though. That you'd leave Trident in your neutral item, your, your main inventory, and then you get another neutral item. That's potentially very good. I like that. But before Trident was kind of mediocre anyways, because it costs money to build it, and it still took you a big slot. I don't know. That's, that's kind of cool. Once in the neutral slot, you can't put it in your inventory. Okay, so maybe it is a bug. We'll see. See what happens. They'll fix it within a day, probably. Um, Reality Rift armor reduction increase. There's a hero that really needed a buff. The hero was uh, in a bad place. Um, they, so they changed Reality Rift back to the, how it used to be with minus armor on your second skill instead of slow. And um, that plus neutral items made the hero bad. Phantasm incoming damage has been reduced again by 25. Right. The, um, the Ags on... CK is actually not that bad. I thought it was kind of garbage. And some guy asked, sent me a message saying like, 
Should I buy Ags on CK? And I was like, ah, oh, there's no way it's so bad. Because I was thinking of the one where you could cast it on an ally and they'd create a lot of illusions. But the way it works now, which I forgot about at the start of the writing that email, was it creates an illusion of all ally heroes. And what's important here, and it gives you another illusion on your hero, which is arguably a 100% damage increase late game. The reason that this can be very good is because it gives you so many fucking illusions that use Reality Rift on somebody and they are 100% surrounded. If they don't have phase boots, force staff, or blink or something to get out, they are stuck there. They are in you. Uh, in between all of your, your Chaos Knight illusions. So the cool thing about Ags right now is it gives you guaranteed surrounds, which usually would only happen sometimes. Like if any or if you bought Manta style. So I think there is some argument that Ags could be good on CK now against the right heroes. Um so I think um little buffs to like Phantasm illusion damages and uh and, and keep in mind that your illusions do have magic resistance now. They have twenty five percent. So they're gonna die less to AoE nukes. Even though the damage that you take, I think Phantasm damage taken went up, but the magic resistance went up as well. So they probably take less damage from magic damage, especially against spell amp and magic resistance reduction sources. But they take more from physical damage individually and physical damage cleave especially. So CK ulti should be counterable by cleave, which he doesn't have that much agi anyway. So in some ways, like Battle Fury probably already worked decent against Phantasm, but. Um, I think these are some some buffs that kind of needed to happen to make CK more viable in the ultra late game. He had, he's like a hero that either like hits this like level twenty timing window where nothing can kill you, or he just like gets outscaled a little bit based on like what build makes him. Unless you go like this like shadow blade gank playstyle with like basher or something, but reality rift doing more, more minus armor is not going to be a bad thing. Um, and then t level twenty talent change, no more GPM talent, or you can get plus ten phantasm duration. I'd like that actually. Um, I would usually feel a little bit pulled, no pun intended, between Reality Rift and the GPM talent, knowing that I can either guarantee my late game or I can um, help plan for uh, constant Reality Rifts on Spell Immune Heroes. If you have Ags, um, Reality Rift pierces Spell Immune is going to be excellent because you're going to be able to surround them more permanently, yeah, even in like late game BKB situations. But plus 10 Phantasm duration is not bad either. Duration is 30. Uh, you could put up to 40. I mean, if you get your cooldown reduction of 15, and I believe Ags also reduces the cooldown of CK, CK's ulti. Let me check. I just want to check the uptime of illusions to duration. It's an important thing to check whether when you're trying to value like how much duration is valuable. And this is a, a cool way to try to make um, his Ags just straight up better, basically. Um... I don't want to level up all the way, but I do want to see how long this lasts. So, um, 30 out of 45, if I get the cooldown reduction talent, which I personally almost never do, we're at uh, 30 out of 123. And then if we add this, it's now 40 out of 123. Which looks a lot better. Before it's like you pop your ulti and it's gone and it just feels garbage, right? Oh, I should have done this differently. Uh, and then let's see what it is with eggs. Okay, it doesn't reduce cooldown anymore. It used to, but it doesn't anymore. Okay, so 40 out of 123 is your best possible, which is 1 out of 4, right? No, 1 out of 3. That's not bad. 33% uptime for this ulti. That's not terrible. Straight up not bad. Like, you could certainly use it to Roche... That kind of a thing. For for in terms of like roshing and pushing towers and that kind of thing and farming, like getting this talent to the right is gonna make a massive difference. Fifteen percent cooldown only lowers it by like what twenty seconds or something. Um, I'm not quite done. Let me see. Where are we on the patch notes? Client side of date. I can't join anyways. I still have a long ways to go, actually. I should probably keep going. I'll catch the next one. Um, all right, Chen, uh, level 20 talent changed, uh, GPM reduced, and Hand of God cooldown, so that'd put your Hand of God from, I think, 140? 120? 120 down to 90 seconds, which is a lot more reasonable. Um, the other talent is Holy Persuasion Minimum Health, which is not quite as busted as it used to be. It used to be good when you could stack the Magic Resistance Auras, I found. 
against like heavy magic damage lineups because you could become like truly the most defend defensive person. But um, Chen needs some nerfs. He's still been picked a decent amount. Clink's burning army base damage increased by a little bit. I don't think burning army is as bad as people have made it out to seem. I think it's okay. Um, vision, you do a lot of minus armor anyway, so the burning armies are not terrible. I, I don't think this is as bad as, as some people have thought it was. Um, crystal Maiden, uh, no more GPM, but minus two crystal noble cooldown. I don't think that's going to be enough to make the hero good, personally. Um, it's going to make me probably grab the magic resistance arcane aura a lot more. I'm sure that one will have a higher win rate. Uh, the cooldown will go on, oh, six seconds? Oh, shit. I thought it was nine. So I was like, eh, seven. Eh. But six seconds is pretty close to perma crystal nova. We could see some core CMs, guys. If you play CM, get that talent, grab an Octarine, you're nova in every 4.5 seconds. Yeah, all GPM talents are gone. Um, from a sports perspective, it's not bad. Nova is definitely your best skill. You can cast it more often on fights. You can push creep waves more rapidly. I don't. The cooldown talent is not bad. I don't think. And you can argue that Crystal Nova cooldown translates to more Novas, which is more creeps, which is more gold. So you get more GPM anyways. It's just going to be less like do nothing gold basically. So I could see it. It's it's cool. The choices are interesting for sure. I I, I gotta say I like them. Crystal Maiden. Dark Seer has been quite good. Surge Speed changed. Okay, so it's the same speed at all levels now, but the duration is just lower, which is a, a nice way to do it. Makes it more effective with less skill points, you could argue. Um, which could possibly justify you getting less Surge points. It's kind of like how it used to be, right? It used to be duration-based, I believe. Um, Bedlam damage for Dark Willow. Uh, potentially quite good. 40 damage is, is a lot. 15 is where you're, you're close to level 3 anyways, but... Yeah, that's a lot of damage potentially. Uh, 35 movement speed is also really, really good though, in a lot of cases, on Dark Willow. Kind of depends, like, if you're playing like a 5 or 4, you don't really feel like you can get on top of them much. Movement speed is going to always feel better. But as a core, there could be some circumstances where people play Dark Willow like she was at launch. Where Bedlam damage, they would just like scale and like blow people up with Bedlam. I could definitely see that becoming more possible maybe almost everybody got gpm so i don't know maybe it's not as good you can kill creep waves a lot better that part is really nice about it that's probably the best thing about that talent you can definitely clear a whole creep wave with this extra 40. um death profit buffs base armor increased by one base movement speed increased by five and spirit siphon charge restore time reduced so just early better on earlier so you can probably fight a little bit better in side lanes among other things Disruptor, Thunderstrike, Mana Cost Increase, nerfs the hero. Um, still going to be fine at level 1, but um, as you level up Thunderstrike, your, your ability to spam the skill is going to be a little bit hampered, but the hero needed was picked a lot. It was a little bit too valuable. Um, nerfs to Mangoes are going to hurt Disruptor's viability as a side laner uh, is part of the thing that is going to change here because Mangoes don't give you as much mana now, so you can't trade a Mango for a Thunderstrike anymore as one for one. Static Storm, Scepter no longer increases duration from 5 to 7 is another pretty big change. Because um, people got better basically at catching people with Ag's Static Storm because you just they realize, oh shit, Yules with Ag's Disruptor is incredible! Which they discovered after years of the item being there. And as a result, um, you're not going to be able to easily catch people for 7 seconds, which was basically the case. And what, what was part of the reason that Disruptor was becoming such a good late game support. It's like, if you get within Yule's range of somebody, you they are fucked for 7 seconds, which is insane. 5 is a lot more reasonable. So that means if you have a defensive, like a disruption or a banish against somebody that gets Static Storm ultied, then you are going to be able to buy them enough time for them probably to survive. Whereas before, it's like 2.5 or 3 seconds save of 7 is like, they're probably still dead. Um, and then also, uh, GPM, oh this is a cool one, Connect Field Grants True Strike, or True Sight. Huge change. Um, the GPM was always hard to pass up. 180 is crazy. Plus four Thunderstrike hits is insane. Also, that's a ton of damage. Like an actual shitload of damage. And it also buys you more time to glimpse longer. But Connect Field True Sight is cool. Because now you can use that to just Connect Field high ground spots. To check for wards all the time. Very, very cool. I really like that, challenge, that talent change. That's what, I'm so glad GPM talents are being removed, dude. 
so many talents that I feel like I have to take that just aren't that fun. It's like, oh, I get more gold, but now I have options. I can pick Connect Field against, for True Sight against Rickies or against Techies, for example. But in most games, I'm probably getting plus four Thunderstrike hits. That's sick as hell. That's really cool. That's a lot of damage. But if I'm playing five and I'm really worried about dewarding, then I'll probably grab the other one. Um, Doom, getting nerfs because he's powerful, strength gain reduced. Movement speed for Scorched Earth is massively reduced at level 1. 9 is a big difference from 12. And of our HP regen is just straight up a little bit worse in the later stages of the game. So you're going to be a little bit less uh, healable with level 2 Devour. Late game, it's a little bit lower too. I mean, there's, there's lots of ways to increase your regen on Doom, so I don't think he's going to be hurting that bad. These are pretty small nerfs. The biggest nerf is the movement speed reduction, I think. A little bit less HP mid-game, a little bit less HP regen. It's going to be a little bit easier to burst. Um, Dragon Eye base movement speed increased by 10. God, he's needed this for so long. And Elder Dragon movement speed bonus reduced by 5. So part of the problem with Dragon Knight is like your base movement speed was so bad. You were running around at 295 the whole damn game. Which means that if you don't have a blink dagger or a mobility item, it's like you basically needed blink or shadow blade to like surprise anybody kind of. And it felt like when you use your ulti as well, it's like, okay, I'm fast finally. I can I can like team fight properly. But being able increasing his movement speed by by this is just gonna make it feel less necessary to buy those items. And he can tank up instead, which will make it a little bit easier for him to uh, to to alter his builds a little bit. So I think movement speed is one thing that's really been holding Dragonite back for a while. He's really tanky and he's got stuns and decent damage, so it's like you don't necessarily want to give him too much uh, movement speed, but and he, he does lose five here with his ulti, so like with ulti, it's not that big of a difference as five, but I think the base movement speed increased by 10 is going to make a really big difference for, for DK, and who knows, maybe it might even make him semi-viable as, as an offlaner or something like that. I could maybe see something like that as a result of his base movement speed being less garbage. Draw multi-shot damage nerfed by a tiny bit, five off of all levels, almost nothing, but the, the game will change a lot with neutral items, so we'll see what our win rate is after this. I assume it'll still be decent, but um, five less damage, sure, whatever. Stone Remnant replenish time buff by five, that's very good, and the talent changed GPM to plus 3.7, 3.5 geomagnetic grip. I believe you can grip, if you ulti and affect everybody, you can silence everybody, I believe, so this is actually Kind of insane in the right circumstances because now your silence could last for seven seconds instead of three and a half. It's potentially busted. Um, so either, everybody got GPM. Now you can actually choose like, oh, silence isn't going to be good. Whatever. Then I'll get spell amp. His talents are, he has really, Elrspet has really good talents. He's got really, really good talents, I must say. Um, but Eh, yeah, his win rate's not been great. He had a good week here, but I mean, his pick rate is tiny, tiny, tiny. Interesting. Earth Spirit. All right, Enigma. Um, Malefus damage buffed late game by a little bit. Semi irrelevant. And the 15 talent change, Malefus instance damage. So Malefus is literally going to be a damage skill at this point. Um, I can't see a lot of Enigma's. They're going to have much less farm now. The, the 15 talent was really good because you get to 15 so fast, so you just guarantee farm. Uh, Malefus will hit proc three times when you have four points in it. So that's a 120 damage increase, and it's already going to deal 315. So it's like a decent damage skill, but I just can't. This is so shit until you hit 25. I just don't see anybody ever getting this talent over 15% cooldown rush. I can't see it. Why would you ever get like a 120 damage increase from Malefus, which is a 15 second cooldown, when you can instead lower your ulti cooldown by like 30 seconds? Why, do, why would anybody ever get this? I feel like this damage number would have to be just way higher for this to be valuable. I just can't see it being valuable over 15% cooldown reduction. I have not played Enigma in a long time. I haven't even played him since they added the idle on attack range. That used to be movement speed. And... Um, I do. His talents are very interesting right now, though. They're bad for ability draft. Eh, they're not bad, bad. 15 magic, 15 cool, and 500 health. But um, they're very focused on two skills, Eidolons and Malefice. Definitely Eidolons, though. He has uh, three Eidolon talents at different levels. so It should be plus 100 damage. No, plus 100 is way too much. For a 15 talent, that'd be insane. If you could do plus 300 damage every Malefice at level 15... It's like Malphys is a nuke now, does 500 damage, you know? That's a lot. But 40 feels way too low to me. I'm sure they'll buff this over time. 
And I doubt anybody will skill it over 15 cooldown reduction. Grimstroke, give me the buffs. This guy is in the dumpster right now. The only time he is good with is with ulti combos, and that's going to be the nature. Of I think Grimstroke's probably never going to feel like a really fun hero again because he's all of the, he used to be so busted because not only was his ulti great potentially, and also like leash and shit, but his base skills did so much damage that he would just be able to like win lanes through raw damage. The problem is that they nerfed all of his skills so much because pro players abused the combo of his ulti, which makes sense. So the base here is just straight up going to be bad and less fun to play because his ulti has broken things and he's at he was at the point in the last patch where he was just really garbage. Basin increased by two. It's two more damage, more mana. And then talent change. Plus 100 ink spell max damage. Okay, interesting. And um, movement speed is really good on Grimstroke though, so that's going to be hard to pass up. And 15 talent, uh, more cast range. And more spell amp. The 15 talents are very good, I would say. 175 cast range is insane. That's so much, actually. That feels hard to pass up. But I guess you can trade it off. Do you want more spell damage or cast range? So I guess with uh, this is one way to buff the hero's damage without making him broken in lanes, right? You get a little bit of laning advantage, more mana, more right-click. His base damage is really bad, so this is really needed. Two more damage is really helpful. Um, but if you get the 10 talent for Inkswell max damage, it goes from 400 to 500, which is okay. It's an AoE. 30 movement speed feels so good, though. The movement speed is kind of equivalent to cast range in some ways. You can react and better cast spells when you need them. Um, but if you get the ink spell max damage, and now you can skip. Well, you don't necessarily want to skip cast range, but 15 spell amp could be a lot. I don't know. There's maybe some argument where you could say Grimstroke could be like a really good damaging hero. Maybe like playing him as a core would make more sense these days because then you can abuse your level advantage to make your skills that are kind of mediocre at low points to be more effective. Because once you max out your, get three points in your silence and you go gank a side lane, then all of a sudden like you become a lot more effective. And then you could transition into like spell amp talent and maybe like some Dagon builds. People fucked around with that when Grimstruck first came out, but maybe they're more viable now. Now that um, the GPM is removed, the Inkswell does a little bit more. I could maybe see something like that. Maybe Grimstruck has some value there. I'd probably always go movement speed if I was playing core though. Uh, but yeah, maybe Grimstroke could be better. I don't think he's much better as a support. I mean, you don't even need the GPM on this hero, honestly. With your first skill, you can farm really fast. Not that it wasn't good to have, but it's going to make getting a hex a little bit slower. But um, I don't know. I, I think the hero is still going to have a bad win rate, probably. But it'll be a little bit better, I guess. I, th I think the talent changes are the biggest buff. The two hints not bad either. Um, IO going to get nerfs. IO is still powerful. Um, and overcharge heal is reduced by a tiny bit and the cooldown has increased so it's a little bit weaker so basically you're weaker at level one at, at the first like seven levels than before um, and then the 15 talent no more gpm but you get spirits max distance which is basically garbage oh god those talents are not good Ooh, i don't want to play io and hit level 15 i'm just going to look at those and be like these are both not what i want um, the spell Lifesteal hypothetically could be good because if you get healed from a spell, you probably heal your core. So maybe there's some value to getting Ags now on Io because like no matter what, you get some spirit talent. That's good. But Io is going to feel real, real weak. I know there's another update, but it's probably not patch related. It's probably bug fixing, so I don't need to update probably. Um, plus 400 spirits distance is pretty far. What's the normal one? 700. I think that's kind of a big deal because it's going to help you spot enemy heroes, basically. You'll be able to see heroes coming from farther away. If you just activate your spirits, even if it's only one point, and you put the range really big, it's going to be lower chances that you get found or ganked. So they could basically be warning signs. That part's kind of cool, and I think that's probably where most IOs are going to go is the spirits max attack range because you will skill the ability eventually, probably, and use the mana, justify the mana usage. Um... It's better than Spell Lifesteal. But it doesn't feel like a great talent. The 20 talent's good. 15 armor, that's pretty insane. 25 talent's pretty good. 10 talent's good, but the 15 one's not good. All right, Dual Breath now does its first damage instance immediately. Okay, little buff to Dual Breath. That means that you are going to be able to interrupt a Blink Dagger. Um, you'll be able to interrupt Blink Dagger for less duration per Dual Breath, but you can instantly break salves, um, interrupt Blink Dagger. So you could initiate with Dual Breath better now than you could in the past. Before you cast Dual Breath, the first one would do slow, 
and the second one would do fire. So the problem before is that like uh, sometimes if you cast if you cast dual breath when people are pretty far away from you and you only hit the first the cold breath, they would be slowed, but they wouldn't take any damage. That was a really big problem. So this basically means that like as soon as you dual breath, instead of it being like cold applied, fire applied, whoever gets hit by either of the dual breaths gets hit by both. If they get hit by only the second breath, they still get both probably, is my assumption. We'd have to test it. There's a chance that like the slow one would apply, but usually with the second breath, if they if they like if you shot dual breath, you shoot the cold breath and then they blink in and the fire breath hits them, do they get slowed right now? Because the way that this reads is that you dual breath, you do cold breath, they take damage and slowed. And the second breath would just basically also do a check. Is anybody dual breath yet? If not, then apply the damage, is my assumption. Um, but yeah, you, you're not gonna be able to blink away, but it does also mean that the, the the breaths are kind of tied together a little bit more. But this is a nice little buff against salves um, in laning stage and um, against blink daggers. And it also means that you're going to be able to burst people a little bit quicker on Jakiro than before. It's a tiny little bit, but this is actually a slightly big a deal, a uh, slightly big deal in certain circumstances. And then uh, level 20 talent change from GPM to dual breath range. Cool. Um, the GPM talent almost always felt good and worth it. Um, I love range. The, like You should think of Jakiro as like a siege tower kind of he basically stands around the fight and then casts ice paths and dual breaths on areas that need it and having more cast range on dual breath is a really nice advantage because um it already does a shitload of damage it's a 400 damage nuke when you get the level 15 talent it goes up to uh 80 160 200 it's a it becomes a 600 damage nuke so being able to increase the range by an extra 400 means that you can basically dual breath like, this is straight up a blink interrupter now. The fact, like, this actually here with this is makes this even better. Um, it's really good at stopping blink now. Before, you'd almost have to ice, oh, you'd almost always have to ice path. This, this is really good for Lake Jakiro, actually. This means that your ability to team fight and in, in, in start fights is so much better than it was in the past. Because before, you'd either have to Yule Scepter, which is a cast range of like 600, or you'd have to ice path snipe, which is hard. Straight up not easy. Um, so, this is, a, this is a pretty big, it's a late game buff to Jakiro, straight up. Late game is where this is going to matter. So I think this is a really, really nice buff to Jakiro. As a, as a late game support, he's going to be even more effective. Maybe too good. But I mean, if people have BKBs, they'll still be okay. But most importantly, if they just have a Blink Dagger, you can just dual breath a guy. The, the cast range is slow, or the cast speed is slow. But some like, I mean, what I got I to gotta see what this looks like. Cast range. I think dual breath is like probably 500 cast range or something like that. It's not super far. Yeah, I mean, this is, that's 400. It's like 600. It's about 600. So let's see. If I, this guy's a blink dagger. Instantly takes damage, okay. It's not like mind blowing. I mean, this is 400, right? From the center of my hero to this circle. So it's increasing by that much, but it's good. I mean, if I'm if I'm running around and trying to like initiate on some guy, here's your Yule's range. Good luck getting that close. But now I can be like, boom. Once it hits them, it's gonna do damage a little bit faster. You can kill creep waves a little bit cleaner. I like it. Um, and, and this also unlocks the other the other talent, which nobody ever gets: the 60 liquid fire attack speed. For good reason. Why would you get? It's actually 1050 range. Okay. Why would you get? Minus 60 liquid fire attack speed when you can get 150 GPM, which is a huge amount of GPM. But there are games when liquid fire is good, and it's also going to help unlock the 300 attack talent from being valuable. Um, Shakira is now more worse than, even worse than uh, ability draft, unfortunately. But this is good for the hero. Um, the 300 attack range talent is good because it helps unlock liquid fire from safety. You can cast it from 700 range instead of 400, so you can better affect towers. Uh, from, from taking uh, to lower their attack speed while you're sieging without putting yourself out of position or against melee heroes, melee cores that are scary and you don't want to get close to. So now if you get the 300 attack range because it's a good game for it, at level 20, you can get the liquid fire attack speed as well and you don't feel as awful. 400 dual breath range is still really big because then you can dual breath from safety as well. Um, but if you, if all you care about is like liquid fire attack speed and you're playing against some core that like has some attack speed but not an insane amount and maybe is a little bit weak to like... Um, doesn't necessarily always have BKB active, then minus 120 attack speed is insane from Liquid Fire, considering that it's permanent. So if you can survive through their BKB, um, if you can survive through their BKB, then um, 
uh, then liquid for that, that that talent is gonna be really good. Um, Hooray! okay. Thanks for the sub. You can still blink if you only get hit by the cold. Ah. So what this means is that the fire breath upon hitting will instantly deal damage. Okay. Okay, that makes sense then. So the fire breath still has to hit, but as soon as it does, it starts proccing. And said before, it would like start a timer a little bit. It would come a little bit later. Okay, uh, Juggernaut going to get massive buffs here because um, his he has an atrocious win rate. He's one of the lowest win rates in the game. Base damage by 4 and base movement speed by 5 is huge. Uh, this is one of his big problems is that his laning, his, his damage was pretty low. And um, he would need like Wraith Bands to have anything near normal damage. So just like trading at like early levels was garbage. Which was kind of offset by the fact that Blade Fury was um, you know an amazing skill for dealing damage. And um, most heroes would just beat him there. But um, I don't know, his damage in the mid game was just kind of weak. And it, it felt like it took a lot of items for him to do stuff. And he doesn't necessarily fit in Basher super easily into his build. So it's just like a lot of the items that came out were maybe a little bit too good for other heroes versus Jug. Um, you could argue that he's going to be a little bit better now because Battle Fury got buffed. So maybe a Battle Fury build is more in line. But with as much as you need to fight early, I don't think he's going to be super valuable. I don't know, like, Blade Fury was valuable because it gave him like an easy, like, I can spend TP and continue farming the game out. But if you're forced to fight... And your only damage is from your ulti, which wasn't that great unless you buy damage items or Blade Fury. Like Blade Omni, Omni Slash, like early mid game, is literally a tool to get kills, and that's about it. It's not good at fighting because you just don't do that much damage until you buy a couple damage items. So like until you have at least a Maelstrom or something, it just really doesn't do a great amount of damage. Is the problem? So it's like you could use it to kill heroes, but you need to buy time. So Jug became like a pretty slow hero with the change to Omni Slash is I feel like what kind of hurt him. He became slow, and then the new patch, you had to play faster, so Juggernaut just kind of like, his train ran into the wall, had derailed basically. So increasing his base damage to make him more viable as a laning hero is going to help him. Um, and also buffs to Battle Fury could help too. Who knows? Um, Lich base damage reduced by 2. Hero needed nerfs because he was too strong. His base damage was like almost 60. Uh, Frost Blast mana cost increased by 10 at all levels. Um, and Sinister Gaze duration is reduced by 0.2 at all levels. So these are fine. I think the hero is still going to be good. Your your base damage is still like, what, 55-ish? No, that's not true. It's like 54 or something, which is still pretty good with no stats. The Lich is fine. No problems to Lich. Still lots of damage between your first two skills, and um, you still scale and do lots of good things. Lion, uh, 150 GPM or 60 mana drain. Interesting. Uh, 60 is kind of a lot. That would put you up to 180 mana per second drain. 200 finger is probably always going to be the right grab. Because finger kills are very good. I do like playing Lion a lot myself. Um, I think this is going to incentivize people to almost always grab the 90 damage talent. I saw Yapsor had it today in game 4 when they were playing. Maybe it was game 3. Game three. Um, because you can use a 90 damage talent to kill creeps faster and to kill neutrals. Whereas it takes much longer. It's basically a double damage at level 10. It's very good. Um, so probably 90 damage, I would think. Because it's going to help you farm faster. Um, the mana drain is kind of appealing if you buy Ags. Because you can run out of mana really quickly with Finger of Death. By spamming it. Because the cooldown goes down to 20 at level 18. So more mana drain is pretty appealing. But I got to say, I'd probably almost always want to take Finger of Death damage. Um, against some heroes like deuces and stuff, yeah, maybe people would grab mana drain. And like you could also argue that like being able to steal mana faster is, is less time that you need to stand still as line. That part is good. Because hypothetically you can only you can drain for like I mean it's a fifty percent increase in mana drain speed. So that means you stand you don't have to stand still as often in fights to still have your mana really full. Um I, I'd be very interested to see what the win rates. I assume that like 80-90% of people are gonna grab finger of death damage. And uh, but I assume mana drain will probably have a higher win rate for the circumstances where they do grab it. 
But it's definitely going to mean that Lion has to get his own gold now. He can't just like play the game, participate in fights. He's going to have to hit some creeps to get his uh, his his follow up items, which could hurt, could hurt Lions. Um, I think it's going to affect Lions one rate for sure. His one rate will go down, which I think is fine because I like the hero and I'm down for him to get like a little bit of buff in terms of survivability. I think um, Lunar Blessing now affects base armor instead of total armor, and the values have gone up. So. Um, that means that Lunar Blessing is now better with other agility heroes. The, the Luna Drow combo is even better, arguably, because uh, you're getting an extra 5%. It's only 5%, though. Um, it also means that if you're playing Luna with heroes that don't have a lot of agility, then it's just not even that good. I think, man, I, I don't know if I like this change. Like, they're, ba they're basically buffing it so that it works really good with agility heroes, but that's already how it works well, because that's like... Like it's gonna, it's even better with a draw combo now. But those like I, I just don't like. I'm just I'm very hesitant about heroes that become like really good in very specific circumstances and not very good in other circumstances because it just lowers the amount of the hero getting played. It will slightly encourage Luna to get played. And I guess you get five percent more base armor increase and it's not it's better for luna as well because luna straight up has a lot of agility and you buy a lot of agility items so she will have five percent more armor as a result she has what 20 armor it's an extra armor she is better individually that's very that's very fair her hero herself is better i guess so i overlooked that a little bit before but yeah i mean it's less good. Let's cheesy with like Dragonite. So I guess there's some circumstances. There's some heroes that buy a lot of raw armor. Tiny, for example, doesn't get any benefit from this anymore. So there are some examples where heroes are worse off. So I guess I'm I was a little bit too one-sided because the first example I thought it was the best to draw one. Um, it's better with Ogre. I guess it doesn't matter. It's the same with Ogre as it was before. He still except he has five percent more. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Uh, Lycan Space Int increased by four, so he's gonna be able to cast his spells better. And shapeshift transformation time is reduced. I gotta double check what Howl does again. Reduces armor and attack damage to all enemies. So it lowers armor, attack damage reduction, and it lasts for. It's up to minus eight armor. So hypothetically, with this mana call, or base int increase, you're gonna be able to cast wolves. You have 351 um, mana now. Four, four base int is quite a lot. That's uh, what, 30, 48 mana? It's 50 more mana at level one. So, more wolves for Lycan. Lycan. Man, I learned my alphabet so much that I do these patch notes videos. Uh, Magnus, max damage increased, uh, max damage reduced by four, and power cleave reduced by five at all levels, and the 10 talent is reduced a little bit, which needed to happen. The hero had like decent win rates, but um, its ability to kill neutrals rapidly was a little bit insane. He is He is still your neutral farmer. And he will probably be a little bit worse because you won't be able to fill your item slots as rapidly with uh, the power of Magnus, but um, probably a necessary nerf. These, these are like pretty small nerfs. This is like a 10% cleave reduction on him. So, yeah, probably fine. Uh, Mars Strength in buff, and the slow on God's Rebuke has increased, and the attack damage increase has gone up by 10. So, a little bit easier to burst people with this hero. Little baby buffs to Mars. Oh, let me see these Deuce of buffs. 50%! It was 35 a second ago. This is fucking insane. Ice Frog is really trying to get people to use Medusa ulti in a cool way. More int gain. Just four int gain? That's our highest stack gain. She's a very smart snake woman. Very, very smart. Int is uh, ability to cast spells. It is mana pool, basically. It's going to make mana shield better. It's kind of bonkers what her ink gain is. Um, and now Stone Gaze will make you the fastest damn snake on the fucking board. Let's check this shit out. Watch this. I'm going to take the hero. I'm going to increase my base movement speed a little bit. Don't buy phase. That's bad. I should buy treads on this hero now. Phase, the phase movement speed is bad. It's it's a 10% increase. Fuck that. I get 50 from Stone Gaze. And then you want wind laces. Of course. Maybe Yasha. Maybe a drum. And then another one list. All right, here we are. 393. All right, watch this. Ah! All right, I'm 550. That was overkill. How much do we need? Too much? All right. So, if you get 40 extra base attack uh, movement speed, you're close to maxing out. 
is basically the point. So when the fight starts, you turn your ulti on, and then you run in. And then, they try to turn around. Sucks on you, I snake you, which slows your turn speed. And then you just stand in front of them until they turn into death. And then you just start attacking with the team. I've only played Medusa one game, I think, since her patch. And her win rate is still going to be garbage. But I think she's getting better. And you could also argue that neutral items, uh, the change to them is probably a buff. Because uh, there's a lot of agility heroes like that buy a lot of agility items are going to have item slot issues. Because they buy so many wraith bands. So I would argue that neutral items are maybe a little better on them right now. Maybe. Late game with force boots, they remove moon speed cap. Yeah, that's true. You could hypothetically get force boots on her. I don't think you should buy like four staffs on this hero. I think you should just buy pretty much like the nice part about this change is that her item build doesn't really have to change very much. You can still buy your damage items and your HP items, but stone gaze just happens to give you a lot of movement speed. And now you can use it to actually try to stone your opponents. And that's really important. And it's very important as well that you get the stone gaze duration talent at 20. If you don't get that talent, you are making a huge mistake. All right. Apparently it has a win rate reduction, but I think it's a mistake because it's 2.5 seconds. That's that's movement speed increase for those 2.5 seconds. You should be running into the middle of the enemy team and making sure that your ulti stuns them for fucking three seconds. It's a three second stun. You could look at Stone Gaze. You should look at Stone Gaze as a three second AoE stun. If you look at it as a Ravage for 90 mana or 90 second cooldown, it is really effective. And if people just look at you, they take a slow by 35%. And the radius is 1200. 1200. That's huge. It's like the whole fucking map. So if you can like stone gaze and run at your opponents, they have to run away and you will be faster. So I think Dusa is going to become playable soonish. She's getting there. She's definitely getting there. The 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 snake mana gain, I'm I guess this is kind of good. It doesn't steal the mana anymore, but it refills your mana. So she she basically wants to play as like the tanky frontliner. Is how she wants to play. She just doesn't steal mana anymore. But if you can keep snaking people and taking taking their mana, it's a big advantage. I'd almost rather 40 attack speed though, but maybe that's wrong because it limits your, your tankiness. I don't know. I am becoming a Medusa fan even though I don't play her. Uh, Nyx Assassin Vendetta bonus damage change from physical to pure. Okay, that's very, very, that's like extremely good. And they reduced it slightly late game, which is fine. Um, pure damage is insane against the right heroes. Absolutely. Very good against uh, anti-mage. Very good against any high uh, agility hero. It's just a nice little change. It just makes the ability better for the damage. Um, makes it worth it more to hit. Because if somebody has like, I don't know, 15 armor and you hit him for 250 bonus physical, you're like, eh. You want to hit him because... Uh, they're, they're, they're trying to encourage people to actually hit with Vendetta. Which you don't always want to. Sometimes you want to stun from Vendetta if they have BKBs and stuff so they don't see it coming. But um, encourage people to hit in the right circumstances. And here's another circumstances where it's for sure worth it to hit people with Vendetta. When they have really high armor... Um, sure, give him the hit. And then uh, the 90, 90 GPM to 0.3 Impale Stun Duration. This is a really big deal, actually. Uh, everybody got GPM on Venda, on Nyx. And this is... One downside to Nyx is that you have really bad base damage, so you can't kill creeps rapidly. You have to use your first skill, Impale, to kill creeps, usually. Or you have to get a Meteor Hammer. Both are very good at, at killing creeps. But... Um, increasing the Impale Stun Duration is huge, because that means that you're going to be able to, for sure, Meteor Hammer any hero. As long, as long as they don't have spell uh, status resistance. Because before, you could do it, but it was a little bit close. Uh, enemy hero X. And let's give him, like, I don't know. Cool. And then a meteor hammer. Okay, cool. See how he got a little bit of movement off? By hitting 10 now... What this is going to do is guarantee that Meteor Hammer is even more effective. Because as long as I stun him... Okay, there's still a tiny bit of time. Because the thing is, this has a channel duration of 2.5. And after you cast that, there's a 0.5 second duration where the, the, the rocks fall from the sky from somewhere and then they stun. So, that means if I have a 3.1 stun duration, this shit is really close. Let's see if I can do it. He still got to move a little bit, but it was a lot closer. So 
still got to move a little bit. It's really close. It should be doable. It's really close. Stats resistance? You don't get stats resistance from Reaver. Scrubs? Get out of here. What does it say? Does it say status resistance? Do you get status resistance from strength anymore? You have magic resistance. Further away from a pale? Oh, that's a good idea. Ooh, very smart. So, if I'm stunning from this far away... Very smart. Okay, good call, good call. Yeah, because this, the Impale is travel time, so by the time I cast it... This could arguably make... Like, Aether Lens Ags better. Quite a bit better, actually. This is actually, like, really makes Ags a lot better. Because now, if you're doing some, some shenanigans like this... What's our cast range on this? It's not super far, but... But if you can guarantee the combo now against heroes that have BKBs, now I can do a 3.1 second stun into a 2 second stun more reliably. If they don't have 4 staff, if they don't have BKB, if they don't, if, if they have 4 staff BKB, some kind of leap thing, um, the, in the right circumstances this is a really nice advantage. I don't know how often I'm going to skill it. I always buy Meteor Hammer when I play Nyx, so I'm pretty excited about this change. And and against the right heroes, it's obviously going to make a huge, a uh, huge difference. Um, if they if they do have those uh, life stealer, for example, life stealer is always going to have rage. Jug's going to always have spin. This gives me the ability to actually combo my two spells. So I think against some of those heroes, I'll definitely grab the stun duration. I like I like how small it is, just point three seconds. Um, but if you don't necessarily need it, eight percent spell is not bad either. It's our it's always had like an okay win rate, I think, because you do a lot of damage. Especially with like mana burn late game, you can do a lot of damage. I like that. Uh, nice little change. Fuck GPM talents, guys. So much cool theory crafting to do now. Next session. Okay, Ur Magi. Ten talent change. No more GPM to ignite DPS. All right, you. This is what you do when you play Ogre, guys. You always get the cast range. Wait, how much damage is this? Eh, it's kind of a lot. This could make the ignite build more viable. Finally. If you have max fire or ignite, um, you're dealing an extra 160 damage. So instead of dealing 400 damage per ignite, you're doing 560. So if you hit somebody with a double ignite, that's like a thousand magic damage over 16 seconds, which is not bad at all. But um, I think cast range is, is was already the arguably better talent on Ogre Magi, personally. It makes like casting fire blast from safely safety a lot easier. If you go like Cast range and um, aether lens or something like your your ability to fire blast just massively increases without needing like a four staff or something. Um, so I think most ogres will be going cast range. I would assume. All right, omni knight uh, very effective at the major uh, base arm reduced by one, strength gain reduced, purification cooldown increased by one as well, and the ninety GPM talent definitely going to be a big loss for omni. And it's finally going to make Purification AoE a possibility to take. Uh, plus 10, 10 Heavenly Grace for HP regen. So Heavenly Grace heals for 20 per second. An extra 10 would be a duration of... That's a lot of HP. So that would be 120 extra HP from Heavenly Grace when you cast it on somebody. So instead of it being 240, it would be... Um, 380? No, 360. 240 to 360, so extra 120 HP. Or you can get the Purification AoE, which is has always been a really good talent, honestly. It's been a not bad talent, but the problem is that nobody would ever get it over GPM because straight up it's, it's not going to make you farm that much faster. Let's demonstrate this with Axes. Slow the game down a little bit here. I don't know what the fucking command is. Anyways, let's do this. And then... Alright, well, uh, you're just gonna have to fucking take my word for it, guys, because I didn't spawn enough axes. It gets slower every time I spawn one is the problem. Basically, everything is gonna get nailed. 
So it's a pretty big AOE, but if you grab this, it's going to be even bigger, believe it or not. I mean, it'll hit everybody. Like, you're going to see Omnis, like, nail everybody in the fight with Purification now, instead of it just being, like, a small little window. So, um, I wouldn't be super surprised to see people get this. The, the Heavenly Grace HP regen is probably what pros will grab, because Omni is played as a hero that is supposed to prevent people from dying and himself, and the other talent is going to be better at that. But you will farm faster with Purification. You'll hit the whole creep wave easily if you get the other talent, uh, which should make your farm speed increase a little bit. So either way, across the board, nerfs to Omnite. Um, losing the GPM talent was not insignificant, I don't think. Because now you're going to actually have to hit creeps to keep up on net worth. That's going to be a really big deal. It's pretty easy to hit fast level 10 on Omni, but now you're not just going to get an extra 5,000 gold items without doing anything while standing around trying to defend people. Um, Oracle talent, minus one purifying flames cooldown. Ooh, that's potentially busted with eggs. Oh, that's right, they changed eggs. Which is why they did this. Um, increases cast range and stuns for a percentage of the duration. Ah, uh, yes. So, potentially, the, bon the, the cast range is massive, actually. It's so big. It's actually kind of a cool uh, cool spell. If you combo it with like, some core that has Abyssal, you could start channeling it on your core, release it, core Abyssal's in, Fortune's end follow-up stuns for you know, up to two seconds or something. It's not terrible. Also, you can dispel from super far away. That part's pretty sick. Um, anyways, the, the minus one purifying flames cooldown now helps if you want to heal people more rapidly without having to buy axe. Lowers the cooldown to 1.25. So, not bad. Cast range is still quite good, but um, being able to spam purifying flames on an ally that needs it is quite good. So, I think that is a decent swap. Um, I'm sure Oracle will be sad about the GPM loss, though. Shield crash, cast in place when rooted. Okay, people were asking for this. PA... Kind of garbage. Three base damage is going to help her lane better. Um, tiny baby nerfs to PL. Uh, another nerf to doppelgang cooldown. So this will put it at a five second cooldown instead of ten. More and more time goes on, and that cooldown or that talent looks worse and worse. Minus five instead of minus six. What did it used to be like? Minus seven or something? It's not like three second cooldown or something. It was fucking crazy. But all right. More reasonable skill, thank God. Phantom Lancer. Uh, Phoenix, attack range increased a little bit, base health regen increased by 0.5, and Icarus Dive Slow increase. So I think it slows, what, 30 or something? 28, you get a bonus 18. It's a pretty significant slow. It's actually kind of a big deal. Um, almost all core Phoenixes would grab Spell Amp because they'd rather just do the damage, I think. But in some circumstances, it might just be better to go the Icarus Dive Slow because uh, what that means is that if you do a dive combo, you dive in, you veil somebody, you hit them with fire spirits and you egg. And if you do that and they're slowed by an extra 18%, they're going to be, they're probably going to get caught by the supernova. Because right now, if you dive onto somebody and they're fast at all, they kind of just get out of the, the supernova range. But if you get the, the slow, if they don't have four staffs or blinks or something like that, then you might actually be able to um, get your supernova to pop while they're under it. And it would allow you to get more solo kills. So I could definitely see some circumstances where. The spell or the uh, the dive slow is worth it. But that said, spell amp when you buy veil and you get the fire spirits damage talent, it's hard to pass up. But I don't know, dive slow could be quite good. The cooldown is quite long though, thirty seconds. Phoenix puck base damage reduced by three. That's pretty huge. Uh, level twenty five talent change. No more GPM. Plus 425 waning rift AoE in range. Holy shit. We got a demo of this. This talent seems really good. 420, rest in peace. So, here's our cast range. Why does it not show? It's like this or something. I don't know why it's not showing. Pretty decent range. You can grab the cast uh, the cast range talent, and then it's like a pretty reasonable initiation. And then you hit 25, and some crazy shit happens. Let's do this. This. Literally all waning rift cooldowns. We are in accord. Ahead of the game. My move. 
I'm confused. The, the it doesn't seem like the cast range increase to me. Am I wrong? It's probably bugged. Maybe this is one of the bug fixes. Plus 425 when you rift AOE in range. The AOE is this. This is the AOE. The range should be cast range. And it doesn't look like the cast range is increasing. If it's 425 though, it's basically like a full screen. It'll be like here. I can basically, I could waning rift like this. And if we turn this off, by the way, it's a four second cooldown. So I'll be able to basically do waning rift on a full screen, like here, every four seconds. Once they fix it. The cast range is not stacking with the level 10 talent. Cast range is from the center of the circle. I'm aware of that. But I'm pretty sure this is my cast range from the level 10 talent, the 200 cast range. Because before I was waning rift about here, I get the 10 talent, it jumps to here. Like watch, let's try to, if I do it again. And ignore that level 10 talent, my cast range will probably be farther. If I do this instead. It's just bugged. It's just not giving you range at all. It's just bugged right now. It's probably fixed. If, if it, it says range, I assume that your cast range will go up. But if, if it works that way, it'll be a full screen. I mean, that's fair for a 25 talent in my opinion. If you grab the other one. Like, who needs illusory orb distance and speed anymore? You got waning rift, dude. Holy crap. Waning Rift, silence the whole team every four seconds. Pretty good. If you buy an Octarine, you can perma silence the enemy team. In a massive fucking AoE. <laughs> you could do that before, but not the giant AoE. All right, Pudge, uh, dismember tick change from every one to every half. So same total damage, just basically higher chance. You'll do a little bit more damage if you get your ulti interrupted, basically. Um, and you'll heal more often, so better chance to stay alive with it. Just a small little buff. And the 20 talent change plus one dismember duration. I like that. I'm glad they put that back in, actually, because there were some times where I wanted the... It was like really rare cases where I was like, I would really like to have more dismember duration. And one extra second is like enough where if I'm in a game where I'm not just a hook bot, I'm like a tanky kind of guy, I really like the plus one dismember duration because there will be times with the blink dagger where I want to go try to get kills, like blink rot uh, ulti a guy. And one extra second is a lot of damage. In late game scenarios, that's 120 damage going through piercing. Uh, piercing. It's more like 200 damage. It's like 200 damage from dismember on a level 20 pudge. And you also get an extra second of rot then, which is like another 120, potentially 150 damage. So that's actually a pretty huge talent, the 20 to the right. And I'm glad, again, glad the GPM has gone. Fuck that talent. Fuck GPM talents. Hook cooldown is not bad, 12 seconds to 7. But um, I think, depending on the circuit, if I'm losing, I'm going to get meat hook cooldown talent, probably. And if I am winning, I'm probably going to grab dismember duration, if they don't have that many stuns. If they have a lot of stuns, then I'm probably going to grab meat hook anyways. Pugna base agility increased by, is this the most base increase that we've had on a, on a hero stacking ever? This is incredible. Eight agility? Dude's been doing his Pilates or something. Eight more agility. Look at that. It's the same as his int. He's an agile little bag of bones. I mean, he is very fast. Um, what this basically does is it's a little bit more than one armor, and it's like eight attack speed for the whole game. It is also, what's 0.5 times eight? It is 0.4% uh, more movement speed, which if we do the math really quick, guys. 0 0.004. This is 1.32 movement speed increase for our dear old Pugna. 1.32 movement speed, uh, an armor in a bit, and eight more attack speed. This is pretty good. He's got really high base damage already. So extra attack, eight attack speed is really huge, genuinely. Um. It's going to make him more competitive as a 1v1 laner because he's going to be able to deny and uh, harass and stuff more often. It's not. It's really not that big. I'm overhyping this, of course, but it's not terrible. That's a lot of stats. A lot of free stats right there. And the, the extra armor increase will not be bad. I like that they increase his agility rather than like just giving him a base armor or something. It's more fun. Um, uh, Before I go back, what's his base armor now? 3.8. That's pretty good. For a hero like Pugna that's going to buy a lot of raw HP, I like it. Uh, Queen of Pain int gain increased, more damage. It's a pretty big increase, 0.5. Sonic Wave damage increased in the late game by a little bit. 20 at level 12 and 40 at level 18. This is pretty nice. A little bit more right click. A little bit more mana to do crazy stuff with. It's okay. Late game buff to qual. Probably fine. Arcane Supremacy debuff amplification reduced. 
by 4% at all levels. So this is the duration that somebody is stunned for. It still does a lot of spell damage, but it will do a little bit less stun duration. So for every second of stun that you throw as the Rubik, you will do 0 0.04 seconds less stun duration, which is fine. There might be some circumstances where this matters with like spell combo stuff, but it'll probably help with like um, telekinesis cooldown late game. Because you could get it down to seven seconds, but it wasn't lasting for two, two times 1.44. So Telekinesis before would stun for 2.88 seconds against a single target out of 7 second cooldown. So I guess you can stack it, but it'll be a little bit less now. 2 times 1.4. Yeah, 2.8. I guess I already told you that earlier. It'll, it'll, it, it's gonna, small little difference. Rubik. Oh god, am I almost done? Fuck, not even close. Uh, Shadow Demon Demonic Purge damage increased by 50. This is fine. It's not really the purpose of using Demonic Purge, but it's not going to be bad. Slightly higher chance to get kills there. Um, Shadow Demon has not been played that much lately, but he's not a terrible hero, I don't think. Um, I never really ended up playing him to with like a massive jungle focus. Um... Maybe he just needs a little bit too mana for him to be good at some of those early fights because he, he runs out of his full mana load and then it's like you have to go back to base. And he's not really here you typically buy BOTs on, so maybe he's kind of left behind a little bit in the current meta. It's like the resource needs on the map are a little bit too high. Costs too many resources for him to do his engagement. Um, hmm. Silencer Talent. Uh, Arcane Curse Slow is actually quite good. It does... Uh, 18. An extra 12 is pretty big. This is a really big slow difference. I imagine most silencers will grab the Arcane Curse slow. Because going from an 18% slow to 30 is huge. It's like a 66% slow increase. Um, and considering against the right heroes, they're going to have this penalty on them. And like you, you notice the 18% slow, but it's not like debilitating. 30% if it lasts for 15 seconds or something is debilitating. That's a massive difference. It's like Poison Sting, basically. I think a lot of silencers will grab that. Plus two insteal is also appealing in the right circumstances. But if you're playing silencer and you're losing, holy shit, are you going to be so happy about that 15% that 15 talent? Because now all these heroes that are diving you and killing you, you have better defense. You can just actually slow them at a reasonable amount. 30% slow is not insignificant. Um, I think that's going to go a long ways to making silencer feel less like a really unfortunate hero to play if you pick them and have them in the wrong lineup against the wrong heroes. So I think that's a a really nice change to the hero. Maybe it'll make you too busted. Who knows? Maybe Silencer will be the new support. But Skyrath Mage Talent, uh, Arcane Bolt pierces spell immunity. <sighs> that is really fucking good for core Skywraths. Holy crap! I mean, Sky is still like a really good late game hero if you get pair him with some disable because you do so much damage with Mystic Flare. But Arcane Bolt pierces spell immunity against like life stealers and shit. I mean, you got to hit 25 to make it work, but that's, like, it is not hard. If you do have a really good Sky game and you get late game, I could see that talent being just, like, incredible. Because then when they pop BKB, they're not immune to you. Like, that was, Sky was so reliant on, like, Hex and bursting somebody down before. Now it's like, if they pop BKB, you can actually, you can basically argue to buy some defensive items on Sky. That way, if they pop Magic Immunity, you can try to keep yourself alive and then afterwards kill them. Or keep yourself alive while arcane bolting them and then after their bkb runs out kill them whereas before is like full run um and sky's defense is obviously very very low it's one of the issues that he had late game so this could be a really nice advantage especially maybe if you pair him with like some cast range potentially could be kind of cool you can interrupt blink daggers too it's kind of cool provides vision against bkb heroes i, I like the change it's um it's not going to complete he's not going to like completely blast people away but there's going to be some circumstances where he's just like hitting people for like 600 magic damage arcane bolts every two seconds and they get sad for sure there will be some some scary sky moments if you're winning a game it's going to really help you close it out that's for damn sure that is for damn sure if your opponents can't don't have good initiation and they have bkbs um you're going to be able to just be the tower so this could be this is going to really help sky end games if he's really far ahead and he hits 25 and people are like only surviving because of bkbs he can like close games so that'll be a cool might make sky core more viable genuinely might make sky core better yeah 
You have to 25 though, that's pretty far. Solar base movement by 10, that's a huge buff. And Bash of the Deep rescaled, a little bit worse at level 1, but still about the same later. Um, I think this is fine. 10 movement speed is massive. Hell yeah. 10 movement speed is really, really massive, uh, especially in the laning stage. So nerfing Bash a little bit, I think, is, is a fine reaction. Um, we did see some Slar picks, right? It was like Slar plus Drow. I, I saw some tweets about it, but it seems that it fell off towards the end, so it probably started losing. Ooh, do I see a Tide buff? We'll see. Pounce, uh, Scepter uh, Replenish time increased um, to 8 uh, to 10. So basically, like, you're never going to have Ags pre-7 on uh, Slark, so this is a 2-second Pounce uh, increase. So it's a little bit harder, like, max Pounce constantly in the games where you do get Ags. So you could basically pounce for 4.25 seconds. And then halfway through that, your charge will be half completed. You could basically perma-pounce somebody before. You could pounce, wait 4 seconds, pounce again. When that 4 seconds is up, your pounce is back up again. That's if you got the pounce duration, the pounce leash. If you got the pounce leash, talent, and an axe, you could perma-pounce somebody, which is fucking ridiculous. Cancels TP. Oh, hell yeah, give me them. Um, and then the scepter range reduced by 200 as well, which is probably fair, though. The range was, like, kind of fucking bonkers. Um, and then a little bit nerfed the attack speed talent. So, a little Slark nerfs, not much. Mostly eggs. Snapfire in Captain's mode, base damage reduced by 4. That was needed. The hero had, like, almost 60 damage ranged, decent armor, high HP. Fixed fire snap cookie moving units, affected by kinetic field, black hole, and chronosphere. Okay. Um, how much damage does that put you at? Pretty low, actually. 48. No, it's 49. 49 damage on average. A little bit low. Um, decent still for support. She's still going to be viable because her skills are still quite good. I mean, they nerfed a little Shredder a lot, but um, the other two skills are still very good early game. Like you, they're, they're pretty long. The second one's pretty long cooldown, but they make for... When people are out of position, you can definitely punish them. That part is good. Um, Sept, uh, Spectre gets a 1.5 base health regen. Probably a good way to solve the hero. Like, she's very pressurable in lane. And she's a decent late game hero, but she gets pressure in lane so hard. So increasing her regen is really nice. Just gotta, like, increase her resistances and her raw HP a little bit, and regen goes even farther. So, nice little buff to Spectre. I think this is, like, better than, like, increasing some of her other skills by a little bit. You don't really want to make the third skill any better. Um, Spirit Breaker, Bulldoze, cooldown reduced. So that puts you at an 8 out of 16. Isn't there a talent for that too? There yeah, is. You can almost perma bulldoze now. Because it'll be 8 out of 16 at level 4. If you get that talent, you're at 8 out of 9. You're almost constantly bulldozing. That's kind of busted actually. You just play like Spirit Breaker Core now and get to level 20 and just like... Well, if you play Spirit Breaker Core and you don't have the greater bash damage, you're going to feel really bad. But Spirit Breaker Support is going to be fucking jazzed about that 20 talent now. Not that it wasn't good from before, but yeah, I guess there was like a six second swing. It was a huge change. I mean, this is just a huge buff to the hero, actually. Because it like, even if, no matter what's happening, if you get that, no matter what's happening, your bulldoze is straight up almost always up. It's 50% up. And now it gives you options to do like cheesy stuff later. With the 20 talent, or you just, hero's just straight up. The skill is just so much better now. Big movement speed, status resistance. You can use it almost every time with a uh, charge now instead of like an occasional thing. It's cool. Uh, that's a really nice change. Sven, where are you at? Stormhammer damage increased. That kind of needed to happen because the hero had a really low win rate. Um, his, right. his Stormhammer got nerfed so much. Stun duration was low. Damage was low at level 1. Warcry self-movement bonus increased. And how much is it for allies? Half or something? Oh, it only increases. That's right. It only increases Sven's movement speed, not your team's. But it does give them armor. And damage? What the fuck did they add that? I didn't even know that was there. Damage and armor bonus for you and your team. Movement speed for yourself. And the cooldown gets reduced by four late games, so it's eight out of 20 now. Okay. Pretty cool. Basically, semi-unnoticeable. War Cry is a value level one skill, it's 30 movement speed. Not that it's bad later either. Oh, it's four seconds at all levels, yeah. So yeah, you can just Warcry more often now. Basically, Stormhammer and Warcry better, better level 1 skills than they were previously. Should make his laning a little bit better. Techies, Blast Off, Self Damage Change from Pure to Magical. Okay, I was wondering if they're going to do this. When I saw the Magic Resistance Talent at 10, I was like, is this supposed to reduce Blast Off? And I was like, nah, it's Self Damage. It should be Pure, right? 
So basically, it's going to allow you to use Blast Off, but not necessarily kill yourself um, as easily. So you can buy magic resistance items and use Blast Off all the time. And here's a talent to do that. GPM gone, now Blast Off. This is cool. Let's check out these numbers. So that would mean that you could do Blast Off every seven seconds now, which means let's take a look, guys. This is going to be fun. That's a nerf. Not necessarily. It's a nerf for being able to kill yourself because um, it basically means that it's going to be easier to make a mistake dying. Because before you just have to be below half. So if I'm below half on techies, I I use... Oh, this is like a little bit too much. Or a little bit too low. I'm going to live here. I knew that because I was below half, but I have 25% magic resistance, 26% magic resistance. So now you have to be a little bit lower to die. But what makes this cool is that if you want to play techies more involved and not necessarily have to be like a mine monster, you could basically play for level 20 and do something like buy aura items with your team, maybe. Let's buy a pipe and hit level 20. Um, let's do the magic resistance talent, which is probably heretics right. to buy. Anyways, oh, I can buy it. Yeah, I can get this too. What's this? A 900 AOE damage nuke? Watch this, guys. Let's buy arcanes. I'll probably have this. Probably have this. I mean, like, let's say I do this. Give this guy a heart or something. How much damage did I take from that? Did I take any damage from it? Oh shit, is there a fight? I'm in! I'm helping, guys. Oh look, he's still su he's still stuck. Oh look, he's still fucked. Like, this is potentially very busted. Alright, let's, let's try this again. Here's the charge thing, by the way, if you guys are curious about it. Let's say somebody else stunned him. Okay, I'm doing this, blah blah blah. I took literally no damage from that. But, same thing, you know? See how much damage I took from that? It's like, actually nothing. You can just cast Blast Off all the fucking time now. So, this is going to make the... I basically took no damage from Blast Off. It's a 7 second cooldown. I can do up to 900 damage. Obviously, having losing 6 mana regen is a big deal if you're being a Mind Fiend. But, I'm, I really like this. For the reasons that Techies is not a bad team fighter. Because you have this long cast range on remote mines, the shit does 750 AoE magic nuke. That's like a finger of death on an 8 second cooldown. That's really good. You can push towers with proximity mines. If you buy eggs, it increases the attack range of proxy mines, so you don't have to get as close to towers to mine them anymore. You can always follow up on an ally using like like blink dagger techies in the past was not bad. You could blink, drop a mine, drop an ult, or drop a mine and suicide and kill people, right? Same same principles here. They added the movement to blast off. They basically solved techies, in my opinion, in some ways. They give you two playstyles now. You can still do that mine bullshit if you want it with the mana regen, proximate cooldown, blah, blah, blah. Um, but now you can also do fighting. Blast off lets you initiate to do damage. That gets you in melee range. Then you can drop stasis traps or other mines. And if it's on a seven second cooldown and you have magic resistance, you can do this shit all the time. What was my magic resistance? I want to see exactly what the number was. Because it's probably insane with pipe like that. And hypothetically, instead of buying like... And I'm not saying you shouldn't still buy like... Ags or something. It's probably still good. Pro players will probably still buy Yules, I'm guessing. Um, so maybe buying like... Maybe you can buy like Hood alone. Or you can just have the magic resistance. So I'm up to 47 right now. I mean, you can just blast off creep waves too. Oh, is that a creep wave? Fuck, I'll do it. I took like 500 damage there. That's not bad. If I buy a hood, let's see how much damage I take now. Took 375. I'm up to 60% magic damage. I could also use hood. I took two, 225, 250 damage there. Like, I don't know, maybe playing offlane techies is more viable from a three position or something. 
because you can transition a little bit better with this lower cooldown. Like there's there's definitely you don't have to sit on your side of the map and like death mine. You do not have to do that. You can cross the map, push creep waves. Like you could basically become a tanky monster on this hero now, in my opinion. In the right circumstances. Like we're gonna start seeing I think we're gonna start seeing like three techies where you go blast off talents. And you will do some mining, but you can basically supplement your team's siege, is what we're going to start seeing. Your armor is high, your movement speed is decent, your base damage is bad, but you have tons of magic AoE. You can farm quickly with all of your spells. You don't necessarily have to max proxy mines. You could potentially use Blast Off to kill stuff, but you kind of... It's hard to use it before you get like the magic resistance talent or a hood, so you probably won't Blast Off that often for uh, creep kills without Tranquils, but... Um, I genuinely think Techies is becoming ready for 3 position again. The problem is you cannot kill creeps at all as a three. So maybe like four transition, potentially. Because you just can't protect the mines. You like literally can't mine a creep wave unless nobody's there. So probably still a four transition, but this gives you more options. You don't even have to get the blast off damage if you don't want to. If you want the six mana regen, fuck it. Get the but but pretty much always you're probably gonna want the blast off cooldown, I feel like. Seven seconds is like too valuable not to spam. And do you need to suicide on techies that much? You don't really need to. Like you'll have it available early game. But it's not the end of the world to not have it in the late game. You're still dead for a long time, you know? Also, techies got nerfed because it takes longer to respawn early game, right? And he's one of the few heroes that can still suicide. So techies got a little bit nerfed. But I think that um, this is ultimately good for him. Because you don't have to put yourself as vulnerable to use blast off. And this gives you a tactical option in the late game that gives you a almost perma silence. So I just, this is really good for techies, which is good because he's gotten quite a few nerfs. Okay, terrible in movement speed by 5, reflection slow increase by 5%, that's fine. Tide Hunter base in by 2. I was expecting something a little bit more interesting than this, but uh, more mana, woo. More gushes, more anchor smashes. Eh, it's fine. Uh, 150 GPM to plus 2 March of the Machine's duration. Um, this was the worst talent of the two. Everybody that I saw that knew Tinkerwell would get mana cost, mana loss reduction. I assume that they will still do this. But if you want like a bonkers good march, I mean, how many seconds does this do? Six seconds. Okay. So this means that it is a 33% increase in marches. This might be really worth it because then you might be able to use like one march to kill a whole creep wave instead of just two, for example. Like, there's mana savings built into this. It would be better against, like, AoE units. Probably. Chen's, things like that. I could see it maybe be valuable. I'm curious to see if anybody will get it. It's very interesting. I don't know enough about Tinker to, to give you an affirmative whether or not that will happen. Um, there's also the other talent, the, the March Machines damage one, but that's, like, a pretty small increase. As a Tinker player, plus two is really good. You risk less split pushing, yeah. Because you don't have to rearm and cast uh, March as much. But the downside is that when you do rearm, you have less mana. When you cast all your spells, you just have less mana. But you could replace it with a Bloodstone anyways, right? But having both the 15 talent and a Bloodstone is kind of busted, probably. Techies heal is pretty good if it's a creep wave, but only if, it, if it's one or two heroes, it's really nothing. Yeah, Octarine on Techies is probably not worth. I'd rather buy like Yules to set up um, Stasis Traps and stuff like that, personally. Um, all right, tiny avalanche duration reduced. Um, this is pretty needed. The The amount of stun disruption that avalanche did was like way too good. It, they upped the duration when it didn't perma stun people. Didn't not perma stun, but like stun for the whole duration. Um, so they upped the duration, but now it's just like, it's so good as like a gap closer skill. This is a big deal because this means that you have 0.4 seconds less to gap close to get a toss back. So it's going to be harder to do toss backs. It's going to be harder to chain stun people that don't have BKBs basically or to keep them stunned for longer. So this is a, he's still gonna do a lot of damage, which I'm glad they're keeping that in the hero, um, but it's gonna be a little bit less easy to do sloppy initial, initiations or team fight disruption. So I think very necessary nerf that doesn't make the hero feel that bad, I don't think. Um, can still do a lot of good stuff. It also means that you're gonna be able to deal your damage slightly faster, because the damage ticks will come faster within the 1.4 seconds, but typically that doesn't matter. It, it will matter a little bit if you do a avalanche and a late toss, because it might mean that more avalanche ticks have been done before you start the toss. So, by all means, this might it's going to make uh, avalanche or tiny pre blink feel worse if you're doing 
long range avalanches into toss follow up for sure. You'll definitely notice some damage decrease in some circumstances, which could affect his snowball. So his win rate will go down with this for sure. I assume that they're still not perma stunned. It might mean that they have less unstun time, but you should still be able to get like four staffs and BKBs off and stuff. Because if they're stunned for less duration, I assume that they they're probably still not as perma stunned. So um, there, there's tiny upsides, but mostly negatives. Um, tree, tiny strength nerf. Nature's grasp, mana cost increase. That's fair. 60 was too low. And then living armor, better at one, worse at four. So a little nerf to the skill. Okay. Little baby nerfs to tree. Not bad. I, I think living armor is becoming less and less good, I guess, for armor stuff, but it's still global and stuff. Min base damage increased by four. This is a, effectively a two damage increase for troll because your range is less wide. You don't see this very often though. Um, it's going to make elasticity more consistent. Um, Tusk base health regen increased by 0.5 and level 10 talent too. What does it get? Walrus punch stun duration. This is not bad. Um, 90 GPM was quite good. Oh, I forgot that they removed the XP talent too. It's 10 health regen. So you either get 10 health regen or you get Walrus Punch stun duration. Um, the stun duration from Walrus Punch is 0.5 or one second. Um, the air time is one second. So 0.5 is pretty big. I would say that if you want to buy Ags, definitely get the stun duration because it's going to give you more time to set up the follow-up. Um, that's also a stun through BKB. So in a lot of cases, I think in most cases, people are going to get the Walrus Punch stun duration because doing your full combo is just straight up going to be easier. Whether you're doing like Blink punch into snowball into shards. You're just gonna have more stun duration. One second is like low enough, where it's a little bit hard to change on, especially because they get shot in the air, so it's hard to click on them. Um, so I think almost always people will grab Waller's punch stun duration because the hero is kind of gank like. Ten health regen is not bad though. If you buy like a halberd or something, that's that's thirteen regen. That's a lot of health regen at ten. It's like insane. Um. So who knows? Radiance tusk is that the move, guys? Radiance get the 10 health regen talent. Oh, probably not, but I like that addition. I like some of these like small stun duration increase talents. They seem valuable. Underlord uh, getting a little bit baby nerf here. Cast range gets buffed though. A little surprised about that. Typically I grab that one. 200 cast range is huge. And then the attack speed talent at 20 reduced. Basically um, buffs to, I mean, this feels like a buff. This one's like slight nerf. I mean, people would get like atrophy talent often but fixed helmet dominator it didn't work on zombies i thought it worked on zombies ice frogs trying really hard to be like guys buy fucking helm of the dominator on undying i'm so excited for this actually i was just thinking about undying earlier today i was like man i should try three position undying again but i was like nah it's so bad level 15 zombie damage talent is now base damage okay cool it being base damage is huge because then if you buy a helm of the dominator the damage increase is going to be fucking bonkers. So by playing on dining, going like helm and drum is going to be... It's a thing, no. It's going to be a thing. Um, okay, let's see the other changes, see if it solves his other problems. Tombstone deathless health threshold is now always 40%. Okay, instead of it being like a minimum value. The movement speed bonus for deathless scales based on scaling. Okay, or based on HP, that's fine. And the attack speed values for Deathlust a scale up. It used to be 75 at all levels. So basically like they nerfed level one tomb probably because it was too good with this 40%, I would guess. But effectively it's better now. I don't remember what the, the, the Deathlust used to be. Uh, Flesh Golem debuff duration increased by one. The Flesh Golem ulti total increased by 10 seconds. I think that's nice. And 30 movement speed. This is really nice. Um, this could work. So I theory crafted this with Undying before, uh, like drum, basically you buy drum and it increases the attack speed of your zombies. The reason this is important is because when you hit people with Flesh Golem, it doubles the damage, I think. It gives you damage, uh, it de deals magic damage per second, but zombies do double damage to enemies affected by Flesh Golem attacks. So if you go like phase, you need phase because otherwise you have to run around the zombies all the time. It's a pain in the ass. I think that if you do Undying, what, what they're trying to push towards is a build like this, where you go phase, and then you go drum. Uh, did I say drum? Yeah. Drum is attack speed. 
This gives a 20 attack speed aura. You can drum to, and I thought you could do this before, but you can drum to give your uh, zombies more attack speed. So hypothetically, if you drop a tomb in a fight, say I'm like a level seven hero or something, and I have one of these and one of these, I can drop a tomb. Let's give this guy a lot more health. Drop a tomb. Zombies are attacking. Let's see if we can click on these little guys. They're affected by the swiftness aura, and once I get a lot, what I can do is this. They're attacking faster, and then I hit them. Now they're doing double damage. See how much more damage this is? And now all of a sudden, people are actually dying. Obviously, he's only got two armor, but he's taking infinitely more damage from the zombies. And this is going to become even crazier when I hit level 15. 10 talent, probably cast range. If you get this talent and increases their damage by 30. I mean, the problem before is basically you couldn't really solo kill people as zombies. It didn't really happen. Um, what's the problem? So now that I got this talent, if it increases their base damage by 30, that means that if I then follow this up, this item up with a helm, then it's going to increase their damage by a lot more. Increases their damage by 19. I checked this when uh, they got patched before. See how much more damage that is? So much more. So I think if you play three Undying, what you have to do is go Helm of the Dominator, which basically the problem was, um, the problem before is that you'd, I wanted to go Meteor Hammer, because you basically need, if you play a three position here, you need a middle ability to creep wave, kill creep waves or push towers. Helm of the Dominator gives you that a little bit because it allows you to um, clear creep waves by using an AOE from a neutral and another right click. So it helps you push and take towers. Um, Helm also benefits you because it makes your zombies deal 30% more damage, I believe. Yeah, because they were doing plus 19 and they did, did like 66, so it's like 6 times 3. So you can buy Helm of the Dominator now as an offlane hero. It gives you 7 all attributes, which is pretty good. It gives you 20% base damage. Your base damage is pretty good. And you can get a neutral to help you stun people, which you didn't have before, and push waves. You don't have to buy Meteor Hammer anymore, basically. Hypothetically, you could have bought Helm in the previous patch. It did the same thing. But the 15 talent being base damage now instead of bonus damage is better because now that extra 30 damage gets bonus by this other 30%. So um, basically, the Helm of the Dominator is twice as good at level 15 with your zombies as it was before. I would still probably buy Helm first over Drum because it unlocks your ability to kill creep waves and... Um, uh, Unlocks your, uh, unlocking your ability to kill creep waves is probably more important first because it makes you more lane independent. But um, buying drum afterwards is probably still going to be value as well. So something like this with like a wand and maybe you fit in like a bracer or something I think would be good. You don't necessarily have to get phased, but I'd probably recommend it because you have all this raw HP. You need some armor to defend it and it's going to make your movement speed a lot higher. And then the fact that this last 40 seconds now is really cool. It's going to make it easier to stay alive. And then, I don't know, either, either tomb talents and then 25, I don't know, whatever you want. But... Similar aura principles is what we've seen before when playing uh, offlane heroes, but it's actually going to give you some damage increase now. If you keep your tomb protected properly and um, get some zombie build up and then pop your drum or whatever, you're going to do a lot more damage now. So right now the, zombie, the, the zombies will hit instead of 33, they'll hit for like 40 something. It's, it's a 30% damage increase. It's not bad. And it's probably easier to get them below 40% now that uh, they just have to be below 40% 40, 40 health. So maybe there's some circumstances where like you do undying with some like AoE nuker, like some Zeus or something, get people below 40. You need some like area control so they don't kill the zombies or the tomb and then I, th I think it could work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely try this today. Show the attack speed of zombies. Yeah, Kyros is really good too. Uh, AC would be really, really good on undying because it's even more attack speed for the zombies. So definitely AC as a potential follow-up or maybe some other disable as well. Um, cause you're, you're, he has really, really shitty agility gain. So having, uh, armor items or, um, attack speed items are really good on the hero. Absolutely. I'm excited. I'm excited. These are some really big necessary buffs. The, uh, oh, the helm of the dominator didn't work at all. Hooray! It didn't give him damage at all before. Okay. They basically fixed the aura items. Okay. Drum still worked. Helm did not. Drum did work. Okay. I was correct about that. But helm damage bonus did not apparently. Cool. Death loss a little bit easier. Small nerfs to early tomb. And then flush golem, much better. 10 more seconds. 30 movement speed, that's actually really, really huge. It can be a lot easier to chase people down. 
Undying's going to be really fast. I forgot about that. I would have been comfortable with all this all happening without the movement speed bonus. Thanks for the subs. You can dominate enemy zombies now? Is that what that means? Uh, Helm of Dawn plus Elf Wolf. Yeah, that could be good. Could be really good for fights. Absolutely. Or you could get the um, Hellbear Smasher. Hellbear Smasher is a 15 attack speed aura. That's really good on zombies too. They attack more rapidly. That means that they are all applying their slow debuffs. People are slowed better. That's a huge deal because then it's going to be harder for them to move on top of the tomb. So normally the zombies don't all like super chase and attack until somebody's low or there's a shitload of stacks up. So just increasing their attack speed and movement speed with the drum pop is definitely very valuable. Okay, cool. So you could take some like crazy strong team fights on, on, on dying. That's for sure. Uh, Venomancer talents uh, rather than GPM plus 15 seconds played war plague war duration. Okay, that's not bad. GPM again is very good, but you can pass it up now. You can get more gale cooldown without feeling bad. Uh, how long do these last? 40 seconds or something? Yeah, 40 seconds. Uh, 55 instead. So that would allow you to probably stack more like eight or nine plague wards on one place if needed. So it'll be easier to rush on, easier to do ancients, easier to defend high ground against death pushes if you have time for setup. So. Pretty nice advantage. Um, I mean, I feel like this can be hard to pass, pass this up no matter what, because this is just like, that's another 15 seconds on a ward. Like, if you just move through the enemy jungle, like, think how easy it is going to be to keep, like, four wards put keeping a way, lane pushed, and then just, like, putting, like, five wards throughout the jungle. Like, it's going to be so much harder for them to, they're just not going to time out, there's going to be wards everywhere. I feel like that talent is just straight up going to be better at almost all phases of the game, even though low ga low gate cooldown can be really good. Can be really, really good. Eight seconds less. It's insane. Gale does a lot of damage. You can gale a creep wave and it dies. I don't know. That's it's gonna be hard to choose. I must say, between those talents, those are both really good. I like that addition. Uh, not as much raw damage or raw GPM for Venno, but he's definitely gonna have better impacts in fights. Other than the whole like less items. So assumption gather damage threshold reduced by ten, and lower mana cost. So Visage is gonna straight up be a better, better hero. Um, better lane support. Uh, I, this Visage lane support fell off really heavily. It got played a little bit, but then people probably realized it was garbage compared to like Lich or something. Um, but yeah, you can cast Soul Assumption a little bit more. Void Spirit added to Captain's Mode. No nerfs, no buffs. We'll see. Probably going to be too good. Um, Shadow Word cooldown reduced by 2. What's that talent do? Uh, minus 7. So you could have 7 second cooldown on Shadow Word when it lasts for 12 seconds. That's really sick. That's just a straight up buff to the skill, right? Um, hard to pass up 10 armor in almost all games. But uh, I've gotten the Shadow Word AoE skill before. That shit is, that's kind of crazy. It feels really good in the right games. Um, yeah, Shadow Word cooldown, quite good. Slap two of those in a team fight. Who knows, maybe the, everything's different. Uh, Weaver Swarm attack rate improved by 0.1 seconds. This could be a huge damage increase. The, uh, the minus arm, this is actually a really big deal because every time they attack, they lower armor. So this could supremely make Weaver's like um, attack armor reduction talent a lot better. An extra 0.5 armor if they attack that much faster. Like BAT decreases of, of 0.1 is like a huge difference. So I don't know, man. The, uh, the 0.5 armor reduction. Everybody always gets swarm attacks to kill. Look at this. This win rate difference is fucking crazy. And that's before the buff. So yeah, it takes a long time for them to die, but within like four seconds, you're reducing their armor by like an extra 1.5 or something. No, more than that. It's probably like two at this point. I, don't, I always look at this talent. I'm like, man, I really feel like I should get this talent. But Where are we at? Towards the bottom. I'm excited, dude. I got to write these down. Weaver, Undying 3. That's it. When arrive in base strength reduced. God, he had 26 base strength. She had 26 base strength. Cold embrace percentage gone down, and the base heal has gone up. So it's better early game, basically, which is nice. It's like an extra 24 HP at level one. Not bad. And level 10 talent, 1% uh, cold embrace. Oh, that feels bad. They he get, they taketh and they giveth. So if you grab this talent, you're equal. 1% is every 100 HP you get an extra 1. So if you have 1,000, it's an extra 10 health per second. It's kind of a big deal. So it's like 80 HP for a 2,000 HP hero. Total difference. But 60 damage is pretty good too, though. 
That's not bad, especially with the way the ulti works now. I don't know if people, I assume people are still grabbing GPM, right? Yeah, that doesn't feel good. But Winter Wyvern was pretty popular at the Majors, so he got little baby nerfs. Witch Doctor base armor by one, good for him. Still got that armor talent and 15 talent. Uh, Maledict AoE, ooh, we gotta see this. All right, it's time. It's time for plus two cast bounces to be occasionally relevant, guys. It's been a long time. I always look at that talent, and I'm like, I want plus two cast bounces, but I cannot not get the GPM. And now we're here. Let's check out this AoE for this busted skill. One of the best skills in the game, without a doubt. And now. That's fucking huge. That's actually so good. All right, never mind. No cast bounces. No one will ever get cast bounces. Look at this AoE. This is so crazy. You just buy Aether Lens on this hero and like fucking snipe people across the team fight. You're like, I'll just, I'll just get your whole team. Look at that. This is so big. I mean, if you land this on like two or three cores, shit changes. Normally it's like rare that you hit a lot of people with it, but I mean, this is so good. It'll be easier to land. It's AoE is massive. Just gotta land Maledic, man. And then you get the plus one Maledic, take a 20. It's beautiful. Decent Witch Doctor buff, in my opinion. I, I mean, I would honestly, I like that better. I'd rather land Maledic on like an extra hero than have 120 GPM every fight. That seems like a big difference. And that's it. That's the patch. All right.